Oh, you're fine. You spread on out. It's okay. <laughs> Hey, are you guys, um, are you ready to call the meeting to order? Uh, hmm. I don't think they can hear me or not. I think Michael's calling it to order here. You, you, you can hear me, Brandon? Yeah, we got you, Mr. Chair. You ready to call it to order? Yeah, just for you. So how are we set up here? I'm up on the, we're up on the screen, some of the commissioners and you guys. Yeah, we got ready? you, we got you up on the screen, uh, you and Commissioner Delves. And I and, did see uh, that Commissioner Bolton's there, so Sebastian, yeah. great job. There we go, all three of you are up on the screen here in the chambers. Uh, we've and, got Commissioners Locke and Allen at the dais with us, and we've got about, I don't know, 300 people in the chambers? <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we do have a good uh, eight or nine we people do. though, so that's good. All right, okay, so uh, everybody's here, so I'm gonna call the uh, regular meeting of the Carmel Planning Commission to order. Um, can we have roll call, please? Commissioner Allen? Here. Commissioner Bolton? Here. Commissioner Delves? Here. Commissioner Locke? Here. Chair LePage? Here. Okay, I wanna wish everybody a happy new year. I hope uh, you've all been safe out there with these storms. Um, so the first item on our agenda is the public appearances. So members of the public are entitled to speak to the Planning Commission on any ma uh, matters of municipal concern, which are not on our agenda. Uh, these matters will not receive uh, discussion at this meeting, but they may be agendized at a further meeting. So is there anyone from the public who would like to speak to the Planning Commission about any matters which are not on our agenda tonight? I see one hand up. It's a phone. Uh, would you like to unmute yourself and um, speak to the Planning Commission? Uh, good afternoon, Chair LePage and Council Members. Uh, Michael McCall through Scenic Road, 2 north of 11th. Um, I've been uh, getting ready for the staff wireless draft telecom ordinance. And as, and as all of you know, I submitted my, my group, the Golden Rectangle Citizens Committee submitted a draft wireless telecom ordinance last year in May. And also the Stop the Cell Towers in Carmel Neighborhoods also submitted a draft wireless ordinance composed by Andrew Campanelli. And I'm waiting for the draft that the staff is working on. And I want to, I want, I would like the Planning Commission to compare and contrast staff draft ordinance with Golden Rectangle Citizens Committee draft wireless ordinance and Andrew Campanelli's wireless ordinance. Because I, I took the initiative to organize the Golden Rectangle Citizens Committee from Council Member Karen Ferlito about a year ago at the wireless telecom meeting. She said, why don't we use other municipalities ordinances and to make ours and to make ours as restrictive as we can so that was the genesis for for me organizing the golden rectangle citizens committee to draft a wireless ordinance and we used calabasas california's ordinance along with petalumas and in the meantime i discovered that carmel by the sea has an incredibly awesome uh, resource called carmelunderground.org. I believe that Dale Byrne put this together. And I encourage all of you, if you haven't already, to, to, to look at it and to read it because we need to gear up because it's going to be a war. And I don't mean that in be too uh, dramatic, but 
uh, we've got we've got these forces out there that want to come into our little one square mile mile village and inundate us with not just 60 70 foot tall cell towers they also want to bring in the 5g infrastructure and on the face of it 5g doesn't sound that that bad compared to 4g or 3g but it uses about 25 to 30 times more electricity these antennas have to be spaced between 250 and 350 feet apart you could go to you could go on vacation two weeks later come back and there's one of these antennas outside your bedroom window or even worse that the cypress tree that you used to admire when you were having breakfast in the morning has now been replaced by a 60 or 70 foot tall cell tower. So we want to make it as difficult as we can following council member Ferlito's statement. Let's make it them as let's make ours as restrictive as we can. Andrew Campanelli had four tests that we required of the mobile wireless companies to prove they had a significant gap in service. So my hope is that the staff was listening to all the meetings and all of the dialogue over the last almost two years now that we've been in this debate in this conversation we need to have the wireless companies prove they have a significant gap in service or they can't put up their cell power in the in the carmel underground website are some incredible articles and videos i encourage you to, to listen to andrew campanelli's he has a uh, he has a lot of great examples of municipalities who are like we are. We want to restrict the rollout of these these wireless antennas because we don't need them, and they then they take away from what makes Carmel by the Sea the greatest meeting of land and sea. But if you scroll through this, and actually what I'm going to do now is I'm going to send it to each of the commissioners so that you have it there. But I, I strongly recommend that you use this as part of your uh, resource when you're putting together the wireless draft ordinance. And that's that's all I have for today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. Okay, is there anyone else that would like to address the Planning Commission at this time on ma matters which are not on our agenda this evening? Anybody in the council? Brandon that wants to? I'm not seeing anyone get up, Mr. Chair. I think you're good to move on. Okay, all right. The next item on our agenda tonight are the announcements. Uh, this is, uh, are there any announcements from uh, the council members? I mean, the uh, uh, commission members? Um, I just wanted to make a comment. Is that is that um, appropriate at this time, Chair LePage? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so I just wanted to recognize and thank all of our city employees and our uh, fire department and our police department for everything that they've done over the past <laughs> two weeks. I, I don't know, it's all a blur. Um, I know personally I've had to use quite a few of the um, different entities and um, everyone has been so professional and so gracious and um, a special call out to Sarah Davis, our forester. I had a tree that was falling down and she promptly was able to come out, take a look, evaluate and determine that it was gonna need to come down. So anyway, that's what I wanted to say. I just, you know, my heart goes out to them. These guys are working so hard and I just wanted to make sure that they were recognized and thanked. Yeah, I wanna uh, say the same thing. I think, you know, we. We really uh, de depend on our first responders like the police and fire in this type of situation and uh, they're always there. So yeah, big big shout out to, to those uh, services that those people provide us. Uh, are there any other announcements from the public or commissioners? Okay, hearing none. We'll move on to the consent agenda. Uh, items on the consent agenda are considered to be routine in nature and do not require discussion or independent action. Uh, anybody, any members of the public or the commissioners may request an item be pulled for further discussion. Um, otherwise, they're usually acted in uh, in one motion. And we only have uh, one item on the consent agenda tonight, and that's just the um, monthly activity report uh, for the building department. 
for December. So uh, does anybody want that report pulled for any questions or discussion? Members of the public? Okay, in that case, I will make a motion that we accept the monthly re the consent agenda as presented. Second. Can we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Allen? Yes. Commissioner Bolton? Yes. Commissioner Delves? Yes. Commissioner Locke? Yes. Chair LePage? Yes, the motion is carried. Okay, the next item uh, on the agenda are the orders of business and we are have a consider uh, consider amending the planning commission rules of procedure to establish an earlier start time for regular meetings for the remainder of 2023 calendar. Uh, do we have any staff reports on this? Yeah, thank, thanks, Mr. Chair. I just want to tee this up really briefly. Mostly, this is a, an item for you all, uh, planning commissioners, to discuss. But if you recall, at our last meeting, we started having a conversation among the commissioners about entertaining the idea of possibly starting the regular meetings of the Planning Commission a little bit earlier in an attempt to uh, not have meetings go super late into the evening and lose people's mental acuity. Um, because it wasn't noticed last time, we couldn't make a decision. Uh, so we've brought it back to you. It's been agendized so you can make a decision. Uh, the rule, your current rules of procedure call out 4 p.m. specifically, so we would need to amend your rules of procedure. Uh, we don't have to adopt a resolution for that. The rules themselves say that they can be amended at any time by a majority vote of the commission. So we would just, if you all talk amongst yourselves, at some point you can call for the vote, Mr. Chair, and see uh, if, if you can get a majority to agree on something. And if not, then uh, the rules would just stay as is. So with that, I've teed it up for you all to have your uh, discussion about how you'd like to address the start time for this meeting. Uh, is this something I think we need to open to the public or is it just primarily for the commission? To uh, you can ask questions of staff. I would I would recommend you open it to the public. Um, but if you have any questions before you open it to the public, I'm available. Okay, are there any questions for staff from the commissioners before we op I open this up to the public? Mm -hmm. Nobody there? Okay. Um, are there any members of the public that would like to make any comments about uh, this matter? I don't see any hands up on my end. Anybody there in the uh, chamber? No one's jumping out of their chair here, sir. Okay. Um, in that case, I'm going to bring it back to commission discussion. I know this was something Commissioner Dells was concerned about. Why don't you go ahead and kick it off? Commissioner yeah, I'll try to be very brief. Um, I, uh, Commissioner Locke, you weren't with us last, um, last time, but um, I introduced the topic of earlier meetings. I think I was understood to say perhaps moving them into the morning. That's not what I meant. Um, and um, that I think we eventually got around to saying perhaps it would be prudent to just start our meetings at three, so one hour earlier. Um, and uh, with the real intent, you know, what, what I heard mostly from my colleagues was it, it, the, the best rationale for starting earlier is to finish earlier um, and not be going you know, past eight o'clock and ideally not past seven o'clock. Um, and so that's that's where I thought we ended up. Not saying you all agreed to that, but that was just the the, the question that we were going to ask. Um, and I would be prepared to um, make a motion to um, move our start times to three o'clock um, after the rest of you have uh, had a chance to weigh in. Okay, thanks, Commissioner Dells. Um, Commissioner Locke, did you want to chime in on this? Just move along in order here sure I, I don't really have anything to chime in other than um, I think you know we need to serve the public and I think in many ways serving the public during business hours um, is good and as the night gets late and we've had some meetings that have gone till 10 o'clock at night um, our applicants don't want to be sitting around waiting for that um, particularly as we move into in-person meetings again possibly um, or as more frequent, um, I think that earlier would be good. I know it may impact some of our commissioners who are full-time employees that work during uh, those business hours. And um, fortunately for me, I have somewhat flexible of a schedule, so I could, I could start as early as two and still do, um, you know, just have the afternoon as planning commission. So I'm, I'm flexible as far as uh, whatever the other commissioners want. Okay, thanks, Commissioner Locke. Uh, Commissioner Allen, you want to make your comments? 
Uh, yeah, so uh, although my employer is very supportive of uh, all of our employees going out and, you know, servicing the communities, um, it is a little bit of a stretch since this is a volunteer position. Um, moving it one hour earlier then also creates earlier times for the tour. So um, at this point, I would vote no on that. Okay, and uh, Commissioner Bolton, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I'm with Commissioner Allen on this one. I work. Um, it's inconvenient and difficult for me to lose the additional time working. Um, so it would be better to keep it as it is. I could probably do one hour earlier, but like uh, Commissioner Allen says, that would push the tour earlier too, and I don't want the tour starting coming at 1 o'clock, and then there's just no point in not starting at noon then, and it just it becomes a morning thing and I, there's no way I could participate in the morning meeting. I understand that wasn't the intent and it's not a proposition, but I'm just saying it's a slippery slope. Um, I think it's fine as it is. Okay. Um, kind of sounds like we're split on this. I'm sort of the... Hey, um, just, just, a, yeah. just an observation, Michael. Um, that's, is, you know, today our, our tour was done in 45 minutes, right? Um, yeah. The, you know, the, you know, it's my experience, and I'm sure you guys see it too. Is it, you know, there's a lot of variables in what mm -hmm. determines how long these meetings go. Even even the tours. I mean, sometimes the tour you think is going to be short, and and we barely make it back, or we actually end up starting late. So, uh, I, as a chair, I'm very conscious about running the meetings as efficiently as possible, so that we can, you know, they don't go too long. And, uh, and I, I, I really think that's really part of my responsibility is make sure that um, I keep track of the time that the speakers are speaking, you know, and, uh, and, and, you know, in the context of making sure everybody has a chance to speak. So for myself, I think um, that, that helps a lot, you know, as far as determining when we, when we get out and how long these things run. And I think also, uh, if all the commissioners make their comments concise and we don't repeat ourselves, you know, we're not just talking, saying the same stuff over, I think that has a lot to do with it. So uh, having said that, I think if we all focus on that, we can probably still work within the context of, of the time frame, the, the times that we already have. And I don't want to, you know, it's, it's not a problem for me. I'm pretty flexible, but I am uh, very sensitive to the other two commissioners. They have some challenges and this is a volunteer position. And, um, you know, whatever we can do to be as flexible as possible so that, you know, members of the community who are dedicated to this and putting their time out are, can do it. And it isn't, it isn't any more of a hardship on them than, than it already is. So um, with, with that, I think that I would uh, not support a time change at this time and uh, try to just focus more on running the meetings as efficiently as possible. And, and try to keep to our time time frames for speaking and so forth. So, um, do you want to have? Do you want to go for an official vote on this, Bob? Or no, I think that's. I mean, I. Yeah, I think we're done. Sounds like sounds like three of us are kind of stick with what we've got, and but I think we can can mitigate you know the the long times just by you know working on the things that I've suggested. Yeah, by not having your fellow council or uh, committee people. Uh, wasting 15 minutes suggesting we save an hour. So I got it. <laughs> Let, let's move. <laughs> That's not what I meant. That's what I said. We're good. Thank you. Oh, man. It's a good thing to talk about, you know, and it's been, it's been, you yeah. know, something that's on our minds a lot. I mean, I, I know that it comes up a lot. So, okay. Uh, all right. We will move on to the uh, public hearings. And the first item on public hearings tonight is a use permit, but it has been, uh, Continued, uh, it's use it's UP 22-320, the uh, Forge and the Forest. And uh, is the staff have any comments on this? Uh, no, Mr. Chair. Okay, does the public have any comments about this? No one from the audience seems to be getting up, sir. Okay, in that case, the chair will make a motion that we continue this item to a date uncertain. Second. Okay, can we have roll call, please? Commissioner Allen? Yes. Commissioner Bolton? Yes. Commissioner Delves? Yes. 
Commissioner Locke? Yes. Chair LePage? Yes. And the motion to continue this item is passed. Uh, before we move on, I just, in the context of what I just said, uh, during the public hearings, the way that I normally organize the public hearings is, is that um, the, uh, the applicants will have five minutes to make their initial presentation. Comments from the public will be limited to three minutes. Uh, if need be, the applicant will be given an additional three minutes to rebut um, the uh, comments. So having said that, we'll move on to the item number four in the public hearings, which is a design study. It's this DS22-077. This is the Hunipuru Investors LLC. It's consideration of a final design study uh, and associated coastal development permit for the demolition of an existing single family residence and construction of a new 1,755 square foot, one story single family residence, inclusive of an attached garage. And it's located on Hunipur Ave, 6 northeast of 8th. Can we have staff report, please? All right. Thank you, Chair. Let's see if I remember how to do this. <laughs> All right. So. Uh, this is final design study. The subject property is a 4,000 square foot lot currently developed with a uh, single family residence that's just over 1,000 square feet. The Excuse me, Evan, are you trying to share your screen or? Yes, yeah, and it's uh, showing okay. in chambers. Is it not on Zoom? Uh, now, now it is. Now it is. It wasn't a minute ago. That's, thank you. Okay, you got no it. problem. It's still not for me. No. I don't have it on full screen. I just have a little window. Can we enlarge that or is there an option to do that? No. Uh, I believe uh, I believe it should be full screen. Uh, maybe something on your controls. Um, you have to do Commissioner Bolton to make the screen larger. Mm. No, I just see the, the gallery. If I try and enlarge it, it's all pixelated and it's illegible. I don't see, like if I force it to become yeah. big or like force it to be pinned per page, it's, it doesn't work. It's still, it's not usable. Yeah, mine, my, I'm, I'm having the same. I don't see any options to make it full screen, but. Can you, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Bolton, can you see the presentation at all? We, we, I think we yeah, can, we see, can it. see it. We can see it in the window, just like the gallery view, the typical yeah. Zoom view where everybody's on the page. Okay. But it does not go to full screen. And then if you force it to the speaker view, which enlarges that and forces it to be full screen, it's not legible because it's not really full screen. It's just blown up from a tiny window and therefore all the text is illegible and useless. Sebastian, maybe if we just pin the chamber screen and unpin the, the commissioners when we're doing presentations, that might do it. How's that? Did that fix it? No, it's the same. Exactly the same. Hmm. If you, I mean, we can, I can, I, mean, I think the uh, commissioners on Zoom can open the staff report up and just follow, you know, your verbal presentation and tell you guys for your- That'd be time. fine. Is that all right with you, Commissioner Bolton, Commissioner Delves? Totally. Let's, you know, absolutely, let's try it. And then maybe, Brandon, um, for the next one, um, our, um, the staff might want to go into their own office and, and jump on Zoom and do it from there. Yeah, okay, we, we can try that. But, but I think, I, you know, this is, let's keep going. Okay, go ahead, Evan. Okay, thank you. Yeah, just go ahead. All right. Um, so the applicant is proposing to demolish all the improvements across the entire site, including the residents and all the uh, landscaping and site coverage and construct a new 1,755 square foot residence. Um, that includes a 228 square foot attached garage, um, as well as um, install new landscaping and site coverage throughout. 
Um, so at the previous hearing, there were a number of draft conditions that were applied to the project. The first being that the required volume study be completed. Um, so the project was allowed 21,600 cubic feet of um, volume. Um, the project actually did not pass um, volume. It was just over by um, less than 1,000 cubic feet. <coughs> However, we have worked with the applicant to um, have the project comply with minimal design changes by dropping um, everything um, by four inches throughout. So the finished floor will be dropped by four inches, the plate will be dropped by four inches, and the ridge will be dropped by four inches, which will result in a uh, compliant volume um, for the project. Um, additionally, um, the project reviewed at the concept hearing did not have a compliant plate height. Um, so you'll see in the top figure, um, there was a plate that was 12 feet, four inches tall, where a 12 foot plate is permitted. Um, that plate was revised to be 11 foot, 10 inches. And then that plate will also be, again, reduced by additional four inches um, as a result of dropping the building um, uh, due to the volume issue. Uh, the forestry department had a number of conditions to be addressed um, between concept and final as well. Um, one of those being that the project needed to be reviewed by the Forest and Beach Commission. Uh, part of that uh, Forest and Beach review, uh, the applicant did propose uh, the removal of the oak tree at the rear of the property, <coughs> as well as a removal of an acacia. The oak tree removal was denied, however, the acacia was approved. Um, and then the forester has also reviewed the revised plans and has included a number of conditions of approval um, regarding the landscaping and the treatment of the trees on site and protection of um, the existing trees surrounding the property. Um, there's a request regarding additional materials. Um, so the first being that a physical roof sample be provided um, as well as um, information regarding light fixtures. That requirement was satisfied and will be discussed later in the presentation. Um, and then an additional change um, has been made from the, the concept plans. Um, so as you'll remember from viewing the story poles on site, there was a large uh, limb from the oak tree that um, basically cut through the story poles. So in an effort to avoid that oak tree limb, the applicant has dropped the rear roof form um, by two feet to avoid the, uh, the oak tree at the back of the property. Um, so the, the figure on the top is what was reviewed at the concept uh, hearing, and the figure on the bottom is the revised elevations. <coughs> and then staff has um, reviewed the revised elevation and finds that the, uh, the revised building forms are consistent with um, all the applicable findings should this form had been reviewed at the, uh, the concept hearing. Um, so in terms of the finished materials, the applicant is proposing a black standing steam metal roof. Um, the building will be uh, painted um, muslin by Benjamin Moore with a white dove trim with uh, Colby aluminum clad windows throughout, aluminum half round gutters, uh, gray calstone pavers, and a redwood deck. Um, so the, the rendering you're seeing was the rendering that was prepared for the concept hearing. This was the initial color palette that was proposed. Um, that is not the actual color that's being um, proposed. It's just for illustrative purposes. We do not have a revised um, color showing the, the muslin. Um, so staff did initially give the direction to avoid a, a stark black and white um, color palette. So the applicant did come back with the, the muslin color, um, which is the, the more creamier off-white. Um, however, staff did maintain concerns about the contrast between the black roof and um, the off-white, um, which is something that we're continuing to see. And the, uh, the commission has um, uh, taken uh, 
had objection with um, in the past. Um, so we do have condition of approval number 36, which states the applicant shall work with staff to select an alternative color palette for the project that is less contrasting and complies with the residential design guidelines. Um, so staff is supportive of the materials. Again, it's just the, uh, the color palette for the project. Uh, in respect to lighting, three styles of light fixtures are proposed, a wall sconce and two styles of landscape lighting. Um, the wall sconce does not comply with the residential design guidelines. The, the locations are identified with the blue circles on the, uh, the plans. Uh, the residential design guidelines as well as the standard condition for lighting required that um, wall sconces be shielded and downlit. This fixture is not. So condition of approval 35 states that the applicant shall for staff to select an alternative wall sconce that complies with the design guidelines and the lighting standards. Um, and then also staff included condition of approval number 36 that states no more than a single wall sconce shall be located at any single building entry uh, to preserve the nighttime, the low nighttime lighting character of the residential neighborhood as encouraged by the residential design guidelines. Um, and then for the two landscape lights, um, those styles have been identified in red and purple and those comply with the lighting standards. Um, and then for landscaping and site coverage, the applicant is just providing a new driveway as well as a new redwood deck at the rear. Um, um, the forester has reviewed the landscape plan and has included a number of conditions. Um, the most applicable ones to our discussion are condition of approval number 33 which states that plant material located in areas visible from the street or other public places shall be arranged in relaxed and informal patterns. Um, so the, the planting material will need to be rearranged so it's less formal. Um, and then condition of uh, another, within the same condition, another point is that um, one of the new upper canopy trees is located too close um, to an existing pine to grow to maturity. Um, so to find a, another more suitable location for that upper canopy tree. Um, and then the remaining conditions that the, the forester applied were included in the resolution. They primarily deal with tree protection um, and uh, preservation of existing trees. Um, so with that, staff recommends the Planning Commission adopt the resolution approving a final design study and associated coastal development permit as described on the screen. And that concludes my presentation and I'm available for questions. Are there any questions for staff from the commissioners? Any, uh, I don't, I see both commissioners online shaking their head no. Commissioners in the council, do you have any questions for? Uh... No. Okay. Thank you, Evan. Okay, um, at this time the applicant make their presentation to the Planning Commission. Good evening, Chairman and Planning Commissioners. My name is John Moore, the applicant on the project. Uh, we've been working with Mr. Court uh, for some time now to make a nice project for the city and I think we've gotten just with a few little last little tweaks to do that we're gonna work with him on but uh, I think the house for a single story house has been dropped, moved, shifted, and everything else in between. And I, th I think we got something that'll comply and look nice in the neighborhood. If you guys have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. And we have read, read all the conditions and we're fine with them. Are there any uh, questions for the applicant from the commissioners? I don't think there are. Okay, thank you, Mr. Thank you. Moore. All right, are there any uh, comments from the public regarding this application? Please raise your hand or come up to the, the podium in the council chambers. Nobody in the chamber, sir. Okay, nobody here raising their hands. So I'm assuming nobody from the public wants to speak on this. Um, all right, I'm gonna close the uh, public comments, open and take it back to the commissioner for their comments. Uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, oh, I do see that Neil up. Cruz might have. Okay. Uh, it looks like he's trying to clap. I think that's a, he's trying to raise his hand, right, Neil? All right, you got Neil. it. Okay. You got it. Thanks, you. Thank you, guys. Right. You have three minutes. Finding all the bells and whistles won't take that long. Thank you very much. Uh, just making a comment about the standing seam metal roof. I believe that's what's used in this project. I, I hope I'm not off on that. Um, and I noticed we have another project before the commission today. 
uh, which is uh, using, again, the ribbed metal roofing. Uh, you know, if, if we do enough of this in Carmel, won't people mistake us for Squaw Valley? You guys ever been to any of the skiing uh, resorts? They all have rib metal roofs. Uh, we're, we're sort of uh, in a moderate climate next to the ocean, but we're beginning to look like a ski town. And I really think these rib metal roofs are an issue. So that's all I want to say. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Neil. Uh, anyone else from the public like to make a comment? Okay, I don't see any hands going up. So I'm gonna close the public comments. So bring it back to the commissioners. Uh, Commissioner Bolton, you wanna begin? Yeah, I don't have a lot to say. I'm pleased they avoided that tree in the air because that was an issue. Um, and I have uh, the same concerns as staff regarding the color. There's a white house just to the north of this property, if I'm not mistaken. So we don't need more stark white with black contrasting um, houses. So. Beyond that, I think uh, the conditions as written are fine with me. So thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner Bolton. Uh, Commissioner Dells. Um, I, I agree with Chris. I don't have anything to add uh, to this one. I think staff has done a good job of shaping a good outcome. Um, and I'll leave it at that. OK, thank you, Commissioner Dells. Um, Commissioner Allen, your comments, please. Yeah, I go along with all of the staff's recommendations on this. I would like to reduce the contrast um, in the color scheme and then also um, potentially look at going back to that original charcoal gray roof if possible um, in terms of color. I like the reduction in the height and um, I think we're good. Uh, if we can change those light fixtures out, that would be great too. So. Okay, and Commissioner Locke, your comments, please. I have nothing further to add, actually. I think you guys covered everything. Thank you. Thanks, Commissioner Locke. Um, yeah, I, I'm in agreement with staff's findings on this. Sounds like my commissioners are too. So I will make a motion that we accept staff's re uh, resolution for approval with their uh, special conditions. Second. Okay, the motion is made and second to accept the resolution as presented by staff. Is there any further discussion? Okay, hearing none, can we have roll call, please? Commissioner Allen? Yes. Commissioner Bolton? Yes. Commissioner Delves? Yes. Commissioner Locke? Yes. Chair LePage? Yes, the motion is carried to approve the resolution as written by staff. Okay, the next item on the public hearings tonight is another design study. This is DS22315, the Dearborn Project. It's consideration of a concept design study for full exterior renovation and addition of a 310 square foot second story addition and 200 square foot garage to an existing 1,336 square foot single story uh, residence with a uh, Carport located on Dolores Street, 4 South East West of 10th Avenue. We have staff report, please. Sebastian, I need to share. Are you? All right, sorry, you should be good now. Go ahead. Yeah, you should be able to share your screen. Perfect. You see? Yeah, that works great. Perfect. All right, fantastic. All right, so this is the Dearborn project. It's a concept design study. And um, all right, um, and so it's a uh, project sits on a 4,000 square lot and it is um, also inclusive of a 216 square foot detached carport. And the applicant is proposing a 310 square foot second story addition, as well as a 200 square foot detached garage. And uh, regarding forest character, um, the city of Forest's, Forester's report states there are four trees in total, three significant trees, two of them are one tree pine, one coastal live oak, and one non-significant tree, and, and it is unknown species according to the city forester, and it is proposed to be removed. Uh, the city forester recommends one upper canopy, however, the applicant is proposing two eastern white pine trees. However, the city forester cannot determine if the proposed tree uh, upper or lower canopy, so draft condition one requires the applicant to provide 
the botanical name for the eastern white pine. In terms of privacy and view, there's a minimal privacy and view, in fact, for the second story addition. Uh, there are, as you can see, no windows on the south elevation, a small window on the north elevation, and two small windows and a, a divided light door that opens up to a 53 square foot deck. And uh, the deck might pose minimal potential privacy issue. And the deck setbacks about 19 feet, four inches from the western uh, property line, and about 15 feet, six inches from the southern property line. And uh, there's a stairway on the north side that, uh, that acts as a screen for the, uh, for the north neighbor. And the project is consistent with the design guideline in terms of privacy and view. And in terms of mask and bulk, uh, um, a 300 square foot addition will significantly ask, add mass and bulk. However, the second story addition is going to be stepped back on the north, south, and west elevation. And it is compatible with the site and the adjacent properties. And um, in terms of building and roof, the applicant is proposing a metal roof, a gable roof form, and 4 and 12 pits throughout. However, the design guideline 8.1 states that roof form should be composed of just few planes and using simple roof form limited to number of subordinate attachments, such as domers, to avoid cluttered design, and roof heave lamp should appear low in scale. And the proposed uh, plan, the four gable domers on the second solution gives a building an uneven and exaggerated scale. And the eaves on the domers on the front elevation appears prominent and not to scale and makes the roof line appear kind of uneven and complex. And a uh, portion of the gable roof <laughs> has a shed form roof due to the proposed second story addition. And uh, the entire roof form appears sort of cluttered from the street, street level due to various roof elements. So draft, rec draft recommendation number two requires the applicant to evaluate and modify the number of subordinate roof elements. Uh, in terms of skylight, uh, the, uh, the applicant is proposing to remove five of the eight existing ones, and they are adding one 24 by 24 inch uh, skylight on the west elevation, so uh, it is not visible from the street. Uh, in terms of site coverage, uh, the applicant is reducing site coverage from 862 square foot to 550 square foot, and project is consistent with the code regarding site coverage. And um, uh, the exterior lights, they're proposing two exterior lights, one by Hampton Bay, other by World Imports, and both are copper colored, and both will be shielded and down light fixtures. And the applicant is proposing 150 lumen output, and the lights are consistent with the uh, codes in regarding the lights. And in terms of the fences, um, there's a four, they, propose, they are proposing a four foot high redwood grape uh, stake fence at the front elevation and a six foot high redwood fence along the north, west, and south elevation. And the project is consistent with the code in regards to fence. And uh, in the finished details, they are proposing vertical cedar siding, metal roof, and aluminum clad windows with divided light, uh, limestone stone, mini stone veneer, and uh, bronze uh, metal roof. And uh, the staff is requesting the Planning Commission to consider the appropriateness of certain detail elements uh, prior to the final detail review. And uh, as I've stated before, the applicant is proposing metal roof, um, metal roof to replace existing wood shingles. Our design guideline 9.8 states that roof material should be consistent with the architectural style of the building and within the context of the neighborhood. And it also states that uh, metal, plastic, glass roofs are inappropriate in all neighborhoods. And um, so the subdivided roof plan, roof material does not fit with the neighboring properties where the, the neighbor to the north, south, east, uh, the neighbors have wood shingle roof. And also the proposed uh, Taylor brand metal roof does not have the matte finish or it's not non-reflective as the previous metal roof approved by the Planning Commission. And uh, therefore the staff recommends the, pro uh, the proposed metal roof for the project be changed to an alternative roof, ma roof material. And um, draft recommendation number four states an alternative to the roof metal be proposed that is keeping in with the Kama residential design guideline. But if the planning commission wishes to support the metal roof for the project, uh, there's a draft condition that states that uh, the applicant uh, 
uh, choose a, a metal roof that is sound reflective and matte finish. As the photo um, on the left shows, the, the tile roof is the one on the right, and the other one is the one that has been approved previously by the planning commission. And the Tyler brand, as you can see, is uh, highly reflective and not matte. And um, the applicant is also proposing stone veneer at the, just the front elevation. And design guideline 9.10 says uh, stone on a full exterior of a building element is, enc uh, is encouraged. However, using stone only on one elevation, uh, for example, on the street facade, is discouraged. And also 9.4 states art architectural detail should appear to be authentic integral element of the overall building design concept. And uh, the applicant is proposing stone veneer only at the, at the front elevation. So uh, draft condition number six requires the applicant of this application of the stone veneer to be authentic and be used throughout the four sides of the building to maintain consistency and not as a design treatment for the street facade. And in our overall design, um, the design guidelines is uh, 9.2 states keep building form and materials and details simple and visually restrained and to avoid any visual complexity and too many different materials or excessive detail create busy appearance and just be, should be sub simplified and also to avoid overly ornate details. And uh, um, in staff's opinion, the, uh, the design is overly complex and ornate when viewed from the street or uh, neighborhood side. And uh, the design element ha uses four different materials. They use metal, wood, iron, and stone. And also the vertical line of the cedar siding as well as the metal roof. Also the uh, off-centeredness of the double domers and the prominent eaves create an overly complex design. Also the iron railing on the Juliet balcony and the flower, bo uh, flower box on the uh, second floor uh, underneath the window and the stone veneer at the front elevation only creates an overly ornate look as well. So uh, uh, draft recommendation number seven uh, is for the alternative design and to avoid overly ornate and complex design. And the staff recommends the adoption uh, of the resolution accepting the concept design study with condition. And this concludes my presentation. I'm available for any questions you might have. Are there any questions for staff from the commissioners? I do have one. Could we go back to slide 10, please? Is that that one? Yes, thank you. I just wanted to look at this image again. OK, thank you. Are there any questions, other questions for staff from the commission? Okay, yeah, thank, thank you, Tour. Did you, uh, someone speak up? I was saying no, <laughs> sorry. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Moore. Okay, uh, thank you, Surrey. All right, uh, the applicant at this time may address the Planning Commission. So Good afternoon, it. I'm Claudio Ortiz. I'm representing uh, John and Danielle Dearborn on this project. Um, I have some additional paperwork that I would like to bring up. I don't know if there's a way we can do that or how to bring it up to everybody's so everybody can see it, some renderings and il illustrations. I don't know if there's a possibility. Do you have it on a thumb drive? It's just one piece of paper? What do you, what do you have? It's on paper. You used to have a... Yeah, I think we have a projector here. It might yeah. take us a minute. Sure. Yeah, thanks. Sorry about that. That's okay. Yeah, let us know in the future ahead of time. We can have that set up yeah. for you. Yeah, unfortunately, my whole life has been turned around this past week with the rains. I had yeah. to move out of the house, and I wanted to have a better presentation. It's okay. And, um, I'm glad you're here. Yes, I'm glad too. you're here. I'll just take us a second to set up sure. technology here. Sure. Thanks, Marnie, for doing that. Do my best. <laughs> so, Sebastian, we're going to do the projector, whatever magic you need to do downstairs to make that show up for everybody. Claudio, do you want to start your presentation? Sure, if I may, yeah. that, that would be great. Yeah, Thank why don't you. you start your presentation, and then we'll, uh, if you need to go back when we get the pictures up. 
Perfect, thank you. So um, I wanted to start by saying that like any project I've, that I've done in the past, you know, we made sure that we place a second story addition in, in a manner that would not have any conflicts with the neighboring properties when it comes to view sheds and casting shadows and maintaining open um, spaces between properties, adjacent properties and, and privacy and so on. So I think staff uh, addressed those issues or pointed out that we did not have or do not have any of those uh, concerns. And in fact, we talked to some of the neighbors. Um, my client has received information from the neighbors that, you know, that they're, they're satisfied with uh, the property, the design. They're very happy with the concept, especially the neighbors to the north. And so uh, we feel comfortable that what we have here, it's, um, you know, acceptable to the neighbors. With that said, um, one of the things that I want to just focus on and not get into too many details, but it's the main part that the project um, that staff has brought up is, is in regards to the massing, the scale, and the roof. One of the things that staff has not noted or failed to address is the fact that we originally submitted a plan to, the plan to, to staff that had a, a more complex uh, structure. Uh, given the constraints that we have with this property and the slopes, and the height, and, and not that this project is the only one, but all the projects in Carmel have a lot of constraints when it comes to massing and volume and plate heights and so on. Uh, and particularly, this project has some issues with the, the slope and put in a second story, and given the position of how the building, the existing structure is, is built, we were very limited on how high we can put the second story. So we originally submitted a project that had a more complex roof lines, and it, ha it had a variation of gables and maintaining the existing hips uh, that the structure has. And uh, we requested for staff to review it and requested a variance, which we were denied. And uh, based on that information, we had to redesign the, 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 the second story to make it um, functional and to work with the existing conditions. Now, my client, John, it, he's six feet three. I'm five eight, so I can get away with uh, lower uh, walls and, and so on, but he can't. But in any event, we, in order to uh, be in keeping with the, uh, the constraints and the height limits and the regulations of 18 feet on a second story plate, our second story plates are 5 feet 11 inches. And as you can see, on top of that, we have a, four, uh, a 412 pitch on that roof that doesn't help uh, creating volume in a second story. And because of that reason, we designed dormers to strategically place them in certain locations to create volume and space and make the second story functional. Um, I have some, um, if I can put this up right now, I have the um, interior elevations that can help demonstrate how um, the lack of uh, volume and space that we have with the uh, four and 12 pitch. So as you can see here, this is somebody standing here, which is six feet three inches, and here's the five foot 11 inch plate and the four and 12 pitch, and this symbolizes the dormer. Here's another scenario where you're looking at the five foot 11 inch plate. You can see how somebody's head is above that line. And then the dormers are placed strategically so that we can have functional doors and functional spaces. And by looking at the, the north elevation that gets that, that walks you into the, the stairwell and the bathroom and so on, you can see how the roof line is, it hugs the the uh, passage the pass the the doorway here, and then you can see a portion of the dormer over here. And I can this is facing east now, and you can see again what the dormers provide for this particular um, interior space. Without the dormers we would not be able to have a second story at all. Unlike the neighboring property who has a dormer and unlike a lot of properties in Carmel have dormers, a lot of times those dormers are, are not functional. They're main, mainly for aesthetics and, and to make the structure look good. In our case, it's, it's different. We are asking to maintain and keep these dormers because they are functional. But beyond that, if you look at the front elevation, one of the things that staff uh, mentioned is the fact that our structure looks massive and out of scale. I'm, I've done a lot of buildings and I've seen a lot of buildings in Carmel, but this structure having a five foot 11 inch plate on the second story, having a seven foot six inch plate on the lower level and a 10 inch uh, uh, floor uh, assembly, it's 
it, it's lower than a standard building uh, in, that is typical. Typical buildings have eight foot walls, 12 inch floor systems, and another eight foot wall on top of that. We're way below that. And again, we have, like I said before, constraints when it comes to volume, height, uh, uh, plate heights, and so on. I think we did the best we could to provide a second story that is within human scale, that is uh, proportional, that functions for my client, and also accommodated in a manner that maintains a mass in the center so that it doesn't uh, create some issues with the neighboring properties. Um, again, the fact that the other concept was not brought up in the staff report, I'm, I wish it would have been brought up because it would have given a better perspective of the process that we went through to get this project to this point. So, you know, that complexity that they're talking about, I can show numerous properties in Carmel that are a lot more complex. Uh, as an example, you know, there's, there's properties as such that have multiple roof lines, peaks, um, here's another view of that, that structure. A lot of mass, gables, door, uh, flower boxes, ornate elements that they're bringing up, which are typical and traditional of the Carmel character. So I'm, I'm, I'm concerned that, oh, I shouldn't say concerned, but I wonder why that's even brought up, because that's very typical of Carmel. I mean, people come to Carmel for the cottage style and, and those, uh, what they call the cute elements, and yet, we're only propo proposing one dormer. Here's another structure with very intricate uh, details. Uh, Claudio, gables, uh, Claudio can I interrupt for a moment? I believe your five minutes are up. Okay. So why don't you wrap up your presentation? And I think we, uh, we understand where you're coming from on that. Okay. Uh, if the commissioners have additional questions about this, we'll, we'll take that in the question period. Thank you. Okay, so I'll, I'll sum it up by saying that I feel that and I hope you see that we are providing a project that is within human scale. It's a project that took uh, the neighbors into consideration. Materials that we're proposing are in keeping and have been approved by many projects in the city of Carmel. In fact, the, the metal roof that I have has been approved by two other projects that I've done. And I have a sample here in case you wanna see it. Um, on the stone, we're willing to work with that and maybe we can wrap it around and hopefully you'll give me an, an, an opportunity to address that as well. I know my five minutes are up, but any questions you have, I would love to answer them and, and hopefully obtain an approval from you guys and to move this project forward. Thank you. Okay, Claudio. Um, I have a question for you, Claudio. Is there some reason, do you have an objection to using a, uh, a heavy uh, uh, fiberglass composition shingle roof? Is, that, is, that, is there any particular reason why you wanted a metal roof? Well, I, I think- It seems like a traditional design and it seems like uh, uh, a shingle roof would be, would work with this design. Well, one of the issues that I've been having with some, uh, quite a few of my clients, in fact, one of the projects that we just finished construction on is trying to get uh, insurances with a, with a wood roof. They're getting very expensive. They're becoming an issue. And I'm sure you heard this many times, but it is a fact that this is, I'm actually dealing with it at the moment. Uh, it's not just in Carmel, but throughout the whole Carmel area. So it's always of a concern to my clients when it comes to fires and issues and insurances and not willing to insure the property, especially when you spend this kind of money and you, you try to make the right. best. What I'm, what I'm asking you, Claudio, is are you open to a fiberglass, heavy fiberglass shingle roof? Uh, that, would, that would address the fire issue. Right, so if, if I may, I know this is conceptual, can I bring this to my client's attention and, and, uh, and see how they feel moving forward? They have a, set, a certain yeah. vision. Okay. that's fine. That's fine. Uh, there, are there other questions from the commissioners from, or Claudio? No. No. Okay, all right, thank you, Claudio. Thank you. <coughs> all right, uh, opened up for public comments. Any members of the public would like to speak on this to the commission? Uh, Carol, Carol Hall, you have your hand up, go ahead. Yes, thank you, Michael. Um, I agree with uh, the, everything that Claudio said, except uh, for the dumpster lid roof, which I call it. Um, there are so many uh, fireproof tile roofs, as you pointed out, uh, that, um, that would suffice. And it really shows from the street, unlike the last project we just reviewed, uh, that wasn't a pro uh, uh, something that I would 
love to see, but at least it didn't show if you were standing directly in front of the house. In this house, it shows from the street very obviously that it, it is that uh, standing seam roof. And I agree uh, that uh, uh, they could be looking into some other other forms of roofing that are fireproof that are uh, that look like wood shingles essentially and would fit more with the traditional style of the house. I like the look of the house. Um, I think that it's not or, uh, too ornate. I think um, I could never argue against flower boxes. Um, and I agree that it is a traditional house that, uh, that can support uh, some detailing and, and the dormers. I think the dormers are, are nice looking. Um, and I'm glad he's gonna revisit the stone uh, in regard to just not having just a base of stone, but maybe a piece of the whole thing that's completely stone all the way up. Uh, so those are my comments. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Um, Neil, did you have your hand up again? Or is that? Uh, no. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mike. I just want to underline uh, Surrey Nathan's um, excellent look at the roof material and discussion uh, about the roofing materials. Very glad to see that. And also underline uh, Mike LePage's comments on the roofing and Carol Hall's uh, to support those comments. Thank you very much. Thank you, Neil. Um, I think the Dearborns have their hands up. You want to make a comment? Yeah, sure. This is John Dearborn. Um, I just I just want to make a comment on the roof. You know, on our street, we have three houses with the metal roofs, and two of them have gone up in the last couple of years since we bought our house. And we like the look, and it looked like um, our street was going that direction. And so that was our first thought when we considered moving away from um, you know, a flammable roof. That was the concept. I think that the uh, person that was presenting initially said that neither, that none of the neighbors have metal roofs. That's incorrect. Our neighbor to the south uh, has a brand new metal roof and the next house down, which went up is also a metal roof. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone else from the public that would like to speak about this application? Hey, Mr. Chair, looks like we have some members here in the chambers. Okay, come up to the uh, podium. Hello, Commissioners. This is David O'Neill, and I just wanted to say that I thought it was a really beautiful design. I think it was very thoughtful, and it, they really thought about the community and what it should look like to fit in and be a part of our traditions. Um, I think that the uh, design guidelines are really great, but I think they're open to a lot of interpretation about the simplicity and keeping things, you know, um, not complicated. I think having the railing on the balcony and having a flower box are very nice, and I think they fit within the design. So um, thank you so much. Thank you, David. Uh, was someone else that wanted to, from the chamber that wanted to comment on this? Looks like that's it, Mr. Chair. Okay. Uh, seems like everybody's commented, so I'm gonna close the public comments, open it up to the commission for their comments. Um, Commissioner Allen, would you like to begin? Sure. So I appreciate the height concerns uh, and the, in terms of the design and when we talk about the complexity of the design, I think I would like to see a more consistent type of, um, uh, uh, not, not as complex, more simple, um, and and consistent. Um, I'm I'm struggling with the combinations that have been chosen, and so um, I I am in favor of um, uh, you know ensuring that we have you know beautiful um, design um, uh, concepts on on the street. Um, and I do like the finishing touches and, and those types of things, but in this case, I think we could probably simplify and, um, and still achieve the look that um, so many people have um, commented um, that they're striving for. Uh, I am not in favor of the metal roof in this specific case. I don't believe that it, um, uh, flows in terms of consistency with the overall design. And so 
I would like to um, see some different options presented for the roof. And then also on, in terms of the stone, it would be fantastic if we could have some uh, potential um, different options um, in, in place of the stone veneer. And again, I would like to reference, um, going back to the staff's recommendation, I believe it's 9.4 in terms of that it, we just can't have that facade look in the front um, on the street view. And so, um, so I think uh, at this point right now, I would like to see some changes to this. Thank you, Commissioner Allen. Uh, Commissioner Locke, your comments? Sure. Um, <clears throat> I will agree with some of those comments. I think that, um, yeah, I have, I have somewhat of a problem with just the front um, stone veneer, I think that needs to wrap if it's going to be uh, remaining. Um, and I've brought up in the past that um, there are various options for metal roofs, and for some reason, we always seem to see these standing seam metal roofs. Um, metal roofs are made in shake, shingle, tile, stamped, uh, whatever. There's a, there's a number of different choices. And um, so I kind of have concern about these standing seam metal roofs being, quote, the roof to have to be fire safe. And I don't think we've seen um, other metal roof types come through us, and I would highly encourage uh, that type of creativity to take place. So um, I don't have a problem with the uh, balcony. Um, I don't have a problem with the flower box, but um, I do think that um, we need to look at the front and just look at how it looks from the street. Hey, that, is that it, Commissioner Locke? Mm -hmm. That's it. Thank okay, you. thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Locke. Uh, Commissioner Bolton, your comments. Sure. I was struck when I approached this on the tour by the uh, the dormers on the upper level. So I'm, I am tend to agree with the statements from the staff report that are not especially supportive of their employment i understand the necessity but i don't find them to be artfully done and i think they could be refined same with the overall roof line i do i do find them to be somewhat excessively complex and uh, i think they could be simplified and made just a little bit more coherent <clears throat> um i'm not supportive of the stone in the front i don't like it i think it looks inauthentic it either needs to be like the uh Applicant already suggested perhaps a whole element stone, that'd be great, or just remove it. I don't, I don't find it's useful. And I want to echo uh, Commissioner Locke's comments about the metal roof. While I'm in support of metal roofs generally, we are seeing pretty much exclusively dark gray standing seam metal roofs. And I don't really want us to have like a new roof in Carmel that you get approval with if you apply for. So I much prefer to see some variety in these non uh, or these inflammable roofs or non-flammable roof. I guess it's better because inflammable means both things. Um, anyway, I think that we need some more creativity on the designers' parts and roofs in general in Carmel. If not pick on this project, I'm just saying um, I'd like to see some other alternatives beyond just either wood or standing steam metal. Anyway, I, I think the staff report is pretty good in this one. I could support it as written. Um, but mostly my main concerns are regarding the, the dormers reform and the stone in the front. Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner Bolt. Commissioner Delves, your comments, please. Yeah, um, first, I, I, I applaud um, the effort here to um, you know, add a second level um, in a way that is consistent with the neighborhood, in my opinion. Um, and consistent with um, with the way it has done has been done in Carmel and many homes, um, and that is especially to the point of locating that mass you know, towards the center, actually towards the back, and then and the center, uh, looking left to right, um, and yeah, I think you've successfully avoided um, privacy issues, um, you know, solar loss issues, um, and have. Put, put put forward a house that is, I think, going to be fine with the neighbors. And it sounds like that's the case already. Um, 
uh, on the roof. Um, I, I don't think I have anything to add to what my colleagues have already said um, regarding regarding the roof, um, the roof form, um, the stone veneer. Um, you know, I, I think the staff report. Um, I think the conditions that I'm looking at are the right set of conditions, and uh, I, I think should encourage the um, applicant uh, to refine some things, uh, particularly on the front. Um, I, to, but to say it, I, I actually I want to agree that the flower box and the Romeo Juliet um, railing are fine with me. Um, I, I think those actually are appropriate elements, and I don't find them overly busy. Um, I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Commissioner Dells. Um, yeah, I wanna uh, make my comments concise here and I also wanna address them to the findings of staff. Uh, while I appreciate uh, staff's uh, findings, I am in disagreement with their definition of complexity of the number of materials. Uh, uh, really, I think the wrought iron detail, the flower box, those are details. And, and um, our guidelines support uh, having traditional details of the houses, the main materials, would be the siding, the roof material, the stone. Those are the predominant finished materials. Uh, railings and things like that tend to be just some details which have to be consistent with the historical uh, type of architecture that the applicant is designing. Um, so I, my only issue is the one that CLAF, uh, staff clearly identified. Any use of stone veneer should be done in a um, authentic manner, which means typically that it has to terminate at an inside corner not terminated outside corners or be a full facade. Those are, have been our past definitions of authentic. Okay, with regards to the roof, uh, I am in agreement and appreciate what the applicant has done here. They've tried to reduce the mass of this. And we are a community of cottages, smaller homes. The reason we have, why we have volumetrics and we address mass is because we don't want big houses looming over the street or looming up on these lots. We wanna maintain our historical context, architectural context of cottages. And so I appreciate that uh, Claudio has done that. A five foot 11 plate height is very low. Uh, and to be functional, there is a need for dormers. And that's traditionally the way dormers have been applied. I also think that while it could be interpreted as complex, the roofing form here, the use of the dormers here is done in an authentic manner. It provides headroom. It's also done in a symmetrical manner so that it creates a balanced design. And it also presents a traditional home cottage style to the street. So I support the design as presented by the applicant. Um, with regards to the roof materials, there are already two or three, I'm not quite sure, standing seam roofs there. Uh, Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Locke's comments were very pertinent. There's many types of metal roofs. Uh, there is a shingle style, there's other styles. Standing seam, we're starting to see only that. That shouldn't be the standard. Um, and I, this project needs to be pre presented to us in final concept without a, a standing seam roof. There's just too many on the property, on the, the block. We don't want, we're, and our guidelines encourage variety within neighborhoods with a consistency of architectural context. Uh, I think the house meets that consistency of architectural context, but the roof finished material needs to be more representative of something else besides a standing seam. So having said that, we have a resolution to approve this concept with draft conditions. Uh, number one is just the tree planting. Then we have the roof form that is uh seems like we have a different opinions about that amongst the uh the commission uh the skylights don't seem to be an issue roof material uh it's what i heard from the majority of the commissioners was uh they don't support a standing seam so uh there needs to be a draft condition specifying that um so that would eliminate the uh i think it's number four for the roof material that would eliminate that. Well, actually the color would be, if they want to come back with a, uh, some type of metal roof that isn't a standing seam, the color would have to be uh, non-reflective and not a, not a high contrast situation. Um, stone veneer has been addressed by staff and number seven is uh, 
uh, the, the complexity of, of, of details. I, I don't, I think, like I said, I appreciate staff's uh, intent here, but I, I, I think that the, uh, I only see this as, as three materials basically on this house. You got the roof material, siding and stone. And I don't think that's excessive. We see that all the time. Uh, so it's just a matter of coming up with uh, a roof material, which is more consistent and creates the variety that we need within uh, this particular context of this neighborhood. So uh, having said that, Michael, I, I, I'd be prepared to make a motion. Go ahead, right ahead, Commissioner Dell. Well, well, basically I have a question for you that, I, I like everything you just said, thank you. It was excellent. Um, uh, would, and, um, particularly on the um, dormers, um, I think we do have a mixed opinion there. Um, I'm inclined to agree with you um, that uh, all, all things being equal, that's the solution. How would you, would you remove the second, the roof form condition completely? Well, yeah, my comments, I believe that the, uh, the design guidelines, you can find findings that support the roof form. It's traditional, it's balanced, it's symmetrical. It addresses the, it, it addresses the problem of mass. And mass, like I said, has to do with, you know, the fact that we are trying to maintain smaller, uh, more cottage style, uh, residences and designs and, and I think I think the uh, applicant explained that was their intent and I, and I think they were successful at that so I think the I don't think it's the complexity of, of the roof I think the issue uh, that I heard in, in the majority was that the roof material needs to be different not a standing so, seam type of metal. So I'll, I'll try this um, um, I, I move to approve the uh, resolution as provided by staff in our packets with the following changes um, for draft, uh, recommended draft conditions, um, number one, as is, number two, eliminated, number three, as is, number four, as is, number five, eliminated, um, uh, six and seven, as is. Yeah, the only thing, number five, even if they go come back with a metal roof, a different design, it's still gonna to have to be non-reflective matte finish. So I think that can stay. Okay. I, I, I think I, number four, we should expand that to encourage the applicant to explore other types of um, non-flammable roof with the uh, maybe uh, a focus on a more of a shingled style roof of which could be, you know, there's many, there's there's fiberglass comp, heavy comp, there's uh, there are metal roofs that mimic shingles. There are other types of um, wood shingle type materials that, which are not wood, which are non-flammable, they're class A. So however you wanna, however you wanna do that. But I think five's gotta stay in there. If they're gonna come back with metal roof, it's gotta be non-reflective. It's gotta be matte finish. Yeah, four and five, they somewhat contradict each other, but um, um, I will modify my motion. Um, Keep number one, remove number two, three, four, five, six, seven, as is. Okay, with the additional language in number four that the applicant is encouraged to explore other types of. So it's not provide, uh, pro provide an alternative to the metal roof. Yeah, okay, just all terms of metal roofs, that's fine. Does it? Okay, is that, is that clear? Do we have a second on that motion? I'll second it. Doesn't sound like we're getting one. <laughs> um, okay, we have a motion as stated, made and seconded. Do we have more discussion on this or a substitute motion? Okay, hearing none, then we'll have roll call. Commissioner Allen? Yes. Commissioner Bolton? I was muted, yes. <laughs> Commissioner Delves? Yes. Commissioner Locke? Yes. Chair LePage? Yes. Okay, the motion is carried. Thank you. Okay, the next item on the public hearings tonight is item number six. This is another design study. This is DS 
22-135, the May projects, consideration of a track one design study application. Uh, this has been referred to the Planning Commission from City Council from an appeal. As for modifications, in the, uh, including a change to the roof material, site coverage, and rear deck modification for a single family residence. It's on Santa Rita, 2000 East of Fifth Avenue. We have a staff report, please. Great. Thank you, Chair LePage. So the application before you is uh, a design study. Um, you have uh, seen this application before um, and it denied some modifications. Um, just by way of some background, I'll try to go through this um, fairly quick. There's, there's quite a bit, but in 2019, the Planning Commission approved a design study for the construction of a new two-story residence on this lot. Um, the lot was vacant. Um, in January of 2021, the building permit was issued um, and then later that year in November, the Planning Commission approved a site plan modification uh, that resulted from some unpermitted tree removals. Uh, in April of 2022, uh, the applicant submitted a separate design study application uh, to make some modifications to the original approval. Um, and those modifications um, included the roof material, the surface of the second story deck, the deck railing material, uh, changes to the side yard patio, um, and then an elevator equipment um, enclosure, as well as an associated door modification. So in June of last year, the Planning Commission denied all of the proposed changes, um, and the applicant appealed that denial to the City Council. The Council denied the appeal in part and referred the project back to the Planning Commission, uh, which is why we're here this evening. Um, this item was scheduled for the December hearing, um, but needed to be continued uh, due to a lack of uh, public noticing. So this evening, the Planning Commission is being asked to consider the final color selection for an asphalt shingle roof, the final design uh, for a new roof element beyond the second story deck um, at the rear of the home, and then also some site coverage modifications. So this is kind of the evolution of the roof material uh, starting on the left. Uh, the original material approved was a standing seam metal roof um, in a light gray color. Um, when that roof was installed, it uh, produced quite a bit of glare and was impacting the neighbors. Uh, so the uh, owner decided to change it to an asphalt shingle roof in charcoal black. Um, this change was made without uh, approval by the city um, and was found to be inconsistent with the design guidelines. Um, the city council was supportive of an asphalt shingle roof um, as, as was the neighbors um, because the metal had produced so much glare. Uh, so the applicant is now proposing to replace the existing charcoal black uh, shingle roof with a country gray. Um, staff does find that the country gray is an appropriate uh, color. The residential design guidelines state that composition shingles should convey a color and texture similar to that of wood shingles. Um, and the country gray, uh, in staff's opinion, does reflect an aged uh, wood shingle roof. Uh, the second item um, is the uh, second story deck in the rear. Um, so as the Planning Commission approved the original project, um, the deck was limited to a certain size uh, and there was a flat roof uh, beyond the deck railing. Um, the approved material for the deck was originally standing seam metal uh, to match uh, the house. Uh, however, during construction, um, the owner decided to carry the same uh, tile surface on the inside of the railing uh, to the edges um, of the deck. And there was a lot of concern about this just being a de facto expansion um, of the deck area, which would be in conflict with what the Planning Commission originally uh, approved. So this request um, to change the material from metal to tile was denied. Um, it was appealed. Uh, the City Council um, upheld the denial uh, and directed the applicant to return to the Planning Commission uh, with a roof design 
um, that would preclude, uh, you know, future use of, of that unpermitted area um, as a deck surface. So you can see on the left um, is, is what exists um, out in the field today as the house is under construction. Um, that area is now proposed um, to be, the tile would be removed and these new roof forms uh, would be constructed uh, beyond the, the railing of the deck. Uh, the proposed pitch of the roof form is four and a half and 12. Um, and this is uh, consistent with the pitch of the, the main residence. Uh, the applicant would finish the roof with composition shingle um, in whatever color the planning commission um, chooses to approve uh, this afternoon. So this is an elevation view of what the proposed um, roof forms would look like. You can see there are a number um, of, of roof elements, um, all sloping, um, and again, proposed to be finished with the same um, asphalt shingle to match the resident. So associated with this, um, with this new roof element um, kind of requires us to revisit the railing. Um, and this slide kind of tells the evolution of, of the railing material um, the opaque glass railing was, was what was approved by the Planning Commission originally. Um, staff had approved a change to the railing, um, which is what you see in the middle, which is a board and batten um, wood, uh, wood railing. Staff did err in approving that, but um, that is the, what we approved there in the middle. Um, and then on the right-hand side is a photo of what was actually installed. Um, so different from what was approved by staff, and that is what um, is currently in the field today. So with the addition of this roof form, um, the contractor would like to use the wood railing uh, to attach um, and support the roof form. And so we're revisiting the design, um, asking the planning commission um, if what is out there today, um, if it was modified to reflect the um, traditional board and batten to match the house, if that would be acceptable. Um, the commission did have concerns about the 11 inch square post being uh, very bulky. And so um, in response to that, um, the contractor has proposed retaining a board and batten wood railing, but integrating the post to kind of reduce that additional bulky element. So that's one um, potential option. And again, this would just help facilitate um, constructing that new roof and using a portion of that railing to, um, to attach it. Um, if this proposal is still too bulky, um, the, uh, the contractor has come up with a, another option, which would be to maintain a portion of the railing as wood and then transition to the obscure glass as um, originally approved by the planning commission. Um, and staff just wants to note that, you know, one of the key principles of our design guidelines um, is consistency in design throughout an individual building. And one of the things that the, the planning commission looked at originally on this house um, was the, the railing was um, a hybrid of some opaque glass and cable rail originally. And the planning commission asked for the material to be um, consistent. So I just wanted to, to mention that something to consider uh, when looking at these um, options. Um, I did hear from uh, one of the neighbors that is due west of the project. Um, they have expressed that they would prefer that it not be a glass guardrail um, just due to reflectivity. Um, and I, I I believe their comments were forwarded to the Planning Commission earlier today. Lastly, um, there are some minor site coverage modifications. Um, the City Council asked the Planning Commission to review the site coverage to make sure um, that it does comply uh, with our requirements. The applicant is um, asking for a minor reconfiguration of the, um, the at-grade terrace. Um, also requesting just to change the, the, the color of the pavers just slightly, um, but staff finds them to be um, substantially similar to what the Planning Commission originally approved. 
Um, staff did look at the site coverage as a whole um, and the project does comply. Uh, the vast majority of the site coverage is permeable um, and they are at or under 556 square feet. So with that staff's recommendation um, is that you adopt a resolution uh, approving a partially after the fact design study uh, with conditions and then also to provide a direction on the deck railing design. And that concludes my presentation. I'm happy to answer any question. A uh, question for staff from the commission. I have a question, Marnie, on the color of the home. What was, what, what are we supposed to be at? So there are no proposed changes to the color of the home. Um, so it will be painted the color originally approved um, by the planning commission. And do you remember what that was? Uh, I can find out. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Marnie, I had a question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm, I skipped ahead and I was looking at the resolution you provided. Um, and um, it doesn't seem specific as to um, a suggestion. I was expecting there to be a condition for the roof, a condition for um, uh, the, the, where, the, where that deck is, is being removed um, and a condition for um, for the railing. Um, and that's not what I'm seeing here. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, so kind of starting backwards, um, the condition that staff included for the railing is consistent with the direction or the decision that you made previously. Um, and that was for it to be opaque glass. Um, there are some, you know, circumstances to consider here with the, the addition of the roof. So uh, we are just looking for some direction on whether you want it to stay opaque glass um, or if some or all of it um, would be appropriate to be wood. Okay, I'm just thinking ahead uh, that this resolution is gonna also need to reflect language about roofing material um, and the you know, redacted decking material, true? Um, I, I guess the, the approach that I was thinking is what is proposed is removal of the tile and construction of these pitched roof form. Um, so I, I guess I didn't think a, a special condition was necessary um, because that is what you are, are approving. Commissioner Delves, if I could. So a way to think of it is uh, you have a proposal in front of you like you would for any typical development. You know, the roof looks a certain way. Uh, if you approve that as proposed, then you wouldn't need a condition. However, if you wanted to, you know, you know, say change the pitch of the roof or select a different material, then you would direct us to add that as a condition to the resolution. So I think that's the approach Marty was trying to take here. Okay, I'll work with it. Thanks. Uh, okay, in, in that context, I think that, that this resolution needs to be more specific to the the, uh, the change of the roof form. I mean, that's not listed in here. So there needs to be a reference to the plans, the amended plans, and also the uh, material that's being proposed on there. Michael, look at condition number one. I'm just finding it now under authorization, standard condition. Okay. All right. All right. Yep. I, I see. It. I'm sorry. Yeah. My my mistake. No, okay. me, me too. Sorry. Okay. Any uh, any more questions for uh, from the commissioners for staff? No. Um, oh. Somebody. Sorry. Before we move on, um, Commissioner Dells, did you want to see the the color the color scheme? No, no, I, I, I was, uh, that my, was my me, Mark. Was, oh, that was I'm Commissioner sorry. Allen, actually. Yeah, um, could we, could you please tell us what the original color was supposed to be? Yes, I, I'm happy to, sh to show that to you. Um, so the, the, these are the, the colors and materials that were um, originally approved, and this is the paint color. It's a distant gray by Benjamin Moore. Um, the windows are white. Um, and the, the trim is also white in a color called bone white. 
Okay, and that distant, distant gray, that is the color of the house currently? Um, I have not confirmed that yet, uh, but we okay. certainly will be, yeah, before we sign off um, okay. on the project. Okay. Because that is, that is the approved color. Gotcha. Correct. Okay, all right. Uh, any more questions for staff from the commission? Okay, hearing none. Thank you, Marnie. All right, uh, would the applicant like to make their presentation to the commission at this time? We don't have anybody here to, uh, oh, there he is. Okay, go ahead. Oh, thank you. Hello, thank you. My name is Jason Marringer. I'm the general contractor on the project. Um, I just want to start by thanking Marnie uh, to put together a lot of information there. And, and there's a lot of things going on with this uh, design change here. And I think she did a pretty good uh, job there expressing it. I guess, um, you know, we're, we're happy to hear that you're okay with, uh, you know, the clump shingle roof. Um, the owner um, wasn't very happy with the metal roof herself and the neighbors also didn't, didn't really appreciate it. So we're happy to, to move forward with that. And I guess that's kind of where all of the uh, other changes kind of interconnect. Um, with the uh, the deck outside of the railing, um, uh, we couldn't really fix that issue until we got a confirmation as to what we're doing with the roof, because we want those those materials to be consistent, and so that's why nothing's happened to the tile yet. Um, uh, we we uh, we did go through the approval change for the. Uh, the railing from glass to wood, and it was it was approved, um, so that's why we changed it. Um, and then when we had the last uh, design uh, review, uh, uh, it was brought that it wasn't consistent, I guess, with what what we proposed, and, and the posts were too bulky. So we don't have a problem with um, reducing those, and you know, being more consistent and more uh, with the board and batten siding. Um, there is a house that just finished a remodel across the street. That's exactly what, what we're proposing. It's the same, same design. So we're hoping that you can um, agree with us on that. Um, and then that's where we come in with, uh, you know, the, the neighbors to the west really don't want any glass railing or decking or any kind of interaction with the, the neighbors with us. So we've had, you know, part of the conditions is uh, the screening, fence screening, uh, planting, uh, large uh, um, vegetation that's going to also provide privacy. We don't, you know, the owner doesn't want to use that as a party <coughs> deck or something. So we're okay with doing something that makes those neighbors happy by putting a sloped surface there um, to prevent that being used as a additional auxiliary deck or party area or anything. Um, and of course, um, we're, you know, uh, that, that would resolve that issue. And um, we're just hoping that we can, we can get to a resolution so we can move the project forward. And thank you for your time. Okay, thank you. All right, are there any members of the public that would like to, uh, well, first of all, does the commission have any uh, questions for the applicant? Okay. All right. Are there any members from the public that would like to uh, make some comments? There's somebody there. Come on up. Yeah. Hi. My name is Harry Herbst, and I am uh, to the west, one lot to the north. Um, and I'm here to uh, talk specifically about that uh, rooftop deck and the, um, the slope of the, um, instead of it being a flat surface, I understand it's going to be, uh, to some degree, a slope, which is, I guess, four, four and a half by 12. And as I understand it earlier, I heard it was it's about 16 degrees. That still seems relatively flat in terms of the slope. And I'm concerned that it's going to get reutilized as a deck by somebody else for two reasons. One, the nature of that slope, which I think could be increased to um, maybe 6 over 12. So we get a steeper slope on there and th thereby disincline anybody to expand that thing into a deck. And secondly, 
as it relates to the wood railing versus the glass railing, the glass railing that we have there now is a, an obvious dissuader from somebody climbing over that thing and utilizing that space as an incremental deck. Before, when it was a, uh, the wooden railing, they actually put in a gate into that. So it just strikes me is it's more likely, uh, at least uh, on that north section of, the, um, of, that, uh, of that deck, that it's, um, that it's going to be, it could be edil, easily utilized as that rooftop deck again. And I just don't want us to all have to go through these things where we come back to the commission and say, hey, by the way, the next buyer did this and did that. If we can slope it steeply enough and have that glass there, I don't think anybody's going to use it as a rooftop deck. That's what my major concern is. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the public that would like to address the Planning Commission? I'm not seeing anyone, Mr. Chair. Okay, no hands going up here on my screen, so I'm gonna close the public comments, open it up to the commission for their discussion. Um, Commissioner Delves, would you like to begin? Sure. Um, now, now that I've found the authorization piece of this condition, um, I, I think Marty did an excellent job here, and I'll, I'll just make the points because I think they make, I, I agree with them. Um, that um, we're authorizing the um, um, composite shingle roof in country gray, um, the construction of a partially hipped four, four and a half to 12 pitch roof forms over the flat portion of the second floor deck located behind the deck railing. And my view is that is the right pitch. Um, I hear you, Mr. Herbst, about trying to future proof this. Um, but in my opinion, I think the, the proposed pitch is adequate that it will not become um, an enhanced deck. Um, uh, and then replacement of the Unilac uh, paver and the Granite Fusion with hydrological permeable pavers in Tahoe Granite. I agree with that. And the replacement of the approved um, hydrological south side yard paver in Brownstone with Country Loam located um, with Country Loam. Um, and then I think we need to add one more um, item either here or somewhere um, as to the deck railing. And um, um, my proposal would be a wooden deck railing without the significant posts in the, um, in the batten board and batten style um, as preferred by the immediately immediate neighbor to the west um, um, uh, with a stipulation that it be a, you know, a solid railing without a gate. Okay, thanks, Commissioner Dells. Um, Commissioner Bolton, your comments. I agree with uh, Commissioner Dells, basically. I think that the uh, solid railing in the board and batten style that was originally approved is okay. No gate. Um, and then I think the uh, other issue, um, the roof, I can deal with, I can accept it. And I can accept the other things that, the, uh, that we're being asked to accept. So I don't really have any big objections to this guy at this point. I think it can just kind of move forward. Okay, thanks, Commissioner Bolton. Uh, Commissioner Allen, your comments? I agree. I would go with option two on the railing, country gray on the roof. Uh, if the site coverage fits with the guidelines, then I'm okay with that. And I would like a um, pitch that uh, fulfills the need to or the um objective of ensuring that no one goes out onto that roof area so i'm good and commissioner Locke. um i don't have anything further um i think they've covered everything thank you uh commissioner dell do you want to make that motion uh i think we're all in agreement uh yeah I, i'll move to approve the uh resolution as provided by staff in our packets um, uh, modifying um, standard condition number one to add a, um, a fifth um, um, element um, regarding the deck railing um, to be reconstructed um, in a board and batten um, 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 manner um, with, without the significant um, mass of the posts um, I hope I'm getting that getting that correct. Um, and then I believe we can eliminate. Um, 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 um. 
special condition special condition number 11 because i think we just replaced that with uh, with the addition okay we have a motion a motion made do we have a second i can second that okay is there any more discussion hearing none roll call please commissioner allen yes commissioner bolton yes, yes. commissioner delves yes commissioner Locke. yes chair lepage Yes, uh, the motion is carried. Thank you, everyone. Okay, two to go. Uh, are we good? Do we need a, a, any time off, recess? Any? I'm okay. Okay, all right, I'm good. All right, the next item uh, is item number seven. This is another design study. This is DS22-150. Uh, this is uh, CRI on Carpenter Incorporated. Lot two, consideration of a concept design study uh, for the demolition of four hotel rooms at the Carmel Resort Inn and construction of a 1,965 square foot two-story residence with a basement located on the southeast corner of Guadalupe and First Avenue. We have staff reports. Yes, thank you, Chair LePage. Uh, so the next two items on your agenda um, are both uh, proposals for new single family dwellings um, on two of the lots at the Carmel Resort Inn. Uh, my first presentation is going to provide some detailed um, background and history. Um, and then if that's okay with the, the commission, I'm going to kind of skip over that for, um, for the second presentation. Um, so please kind of just bear with me as I, I go through this background um, a little bit. So the first um, the first uh, project is is on lot two, uh, which is at the uh, north south southeast corner of Guadalupe um, and First. Um, and again, this is part of the larger Car Carmel Resort in property, which is comprised of sixteen lots of record. Uh, overnight lodging has been uh, provided in this location since about 1926. The parcels that you see outlined in red uh, reflect um, the original lot um, that first provided uh, lodging in this location. Um, and then in uh, the 60s, I believe, um, the city issued a use permit, which is use permit 636. Um, that allows for 25 uh, rental units, uh, one manager's unit, and 31 off-street parking spaces. Um, so the uh, applicant is Eric Miller Architect. Um, they had approached the city uh, with a proposal uh, to redevelop um, these 16 lots, consolidating the hotel um, along Carpenter Street um, and building uh, eight new single family dwellings along uh, Guadalupe Street. And they hosted two community meetings in 2021 um, in October and December. Um, they sought feedback from the community um, on the, the project. Um, and at this time, uh, based on feedback that they had received, um, and also just the complexities of reconstructing a hotel in the R1 district, um, they have decided to explore a scaled down version of the hotel project. Um, and at this time, they're just seeking approval uh, to construct two single family dwellings, uh, one on lot two and one on lot four. Um, and you're gonna see both of those projects this evening. Uh, so on lot two, the proposal um, is to demolish four existing hotel rooms. Uh, the hotel currently is over uh, what is allowed under their use permit. So they're allowed 25 units and a manager's unit. Um, and I believe they currently have 31 uh, units. Uh, so removing these four hotels will bring them closer to compliance with their use permit. Um, these rooms cannot be replaced um, because they are uh, going to be considered non non permitted basically they're in excess of the 25 allowed the proposal is to construct a new two story single family home um, staff is recommending acceptance of the concept design uh, with conditions so the project is a standard 4000 square foot corner lot it's 40 feet wide by 100 feet deep 
Um, the lot currently contains two cottages. They're each about 700 square feet in size, um, and they each contain uh, two uh, hotel rooms. The proposal is for, um, again, a two-story residence, just over 1,965 square feet. Um, the project includes a basement as well as an attached garage um, and a west-facing second-story deck that is uncovered. With respect to forest character, um, the city forester identified five private trees and one stump on this particular lot. Four of the trees have been approved for removal, um, and there's one oak tree that will be preserved. There are also three public trees in the adjacent right-of-way. Uh, two of the trees either have been or will be removed by the city, um, and there's one pine uh, that will be preserved. Hopefully it survives the current storms we're having. Um, and condition of approval number two requires three new upper canopy trees as part of this project. So I think it is also worth noting that um, when the applicant was proposing the larger redevelopment of all 16 lots, um, they did go to the Forest and Beach Commission with a comprehensive tree removal plan. The Forest and Beach Commission did um, approve a plan um, and this is consistent with that plan. The city forester does have the ability to um, accept in lieu fees if three new upper canopy trees um, either just cannot fit or not, are not appropriate for the space um, on this property. And that would be determined at a later time. Um, if fees were collected in lieu of planting the trees, those would be placed in the city's tree restoration fund. Um, and also the Forest and Beach Commission was very clear that no trees are to be removed until after a building permit is issued for the project, um, unless the tree poses a, an imminent risk to health and safety. With respect to parking and access, um, the project proposes um, an attached garage. Uh, the garage is 10 feet tall and a three and, a, three and 12 pitched hip metal roof. It would be set back 15 and a half feet uh, from the street, which is Guadalupe. Uh, the driveway is proposed to be eight feet wide uh, with 125 square feet of permeable pavers for the driveway. The applicant is proposing a metal and glass garage door. Uh, the residential design guidelines say that a garage door should either provide visual interest or blend with the background materials of the building. Staff has included condition number three, uh, which requires that an alternative door style uh, be selected. Uh, staff does not believe that this is an appropriate um, garage door for the project. With respect to mass and bulk, again, this is a corner lot. Um, the code definition of the front yard is on Guadalupe. However, uh, the architect has chosen to um, place the front entry along First Avenue. Uh, so First Avenue really is sort of the, uh, the front facing elevation of this proposed um, design. Um, the home does have a variety of roof lines um, and articulated building walls. And they're also proposing two wall finishes, which is stone and a vertical wood siding. This is a modern design um, and the residential design guidelines encourage simple and traditional design. But the guidelines also state that diversity in housing design and reflecting the eclectic mix of styles that is characteristic of Carmel is also appropriate. So the Planning Commission is being asked to consider whether this design contributes to an eclectic mix of styles or whether um, it should be simplified. And along those lines with the building and roof form, um, it is irregular in plan um, and staff does find it to be visually complex. There are three primary roof forms which are pitched at three and 12 and the eave depth is two feet, six inches, um, which is quite deep from what we typically see. Staff has included condition number four requiring the building form to be simplified and to use restraint in the variation of the wall planes. Uh, to bring the project closer um, in alignment with their residential design guidelines. With respect to finished details, um, 
the applicant is proposing a light colored dry stack stone veneer with a dark walnut vertical wood siding. The roof material is proposed to be uh, metal in a dark brown, and there's a metal fascia element um, as well. The windows, doors, um, and the railing at the second floor deck are proposed to be black metal. Um, and as mentioned, the garage door is proposed to be black metal with glass panels. The fencing proposed for the project is a horizontal flat fence with stone columns, um, both at the front of the property along uh, Guadalupe and then both sides, so First Avenue and the interior side yard. At the rear of the property, the applicant is proposing a stone wall. Uh, while the, the renderings represent the, the fence as being a wood material, um, it's not specifically identified, so staff has included condition number five, asking for the fence material to be clearly identified before final details review. Um, also, um, based on staff's measurements, it looks like the, the fence height does comply uh, with our requirements that they not exceed four feet. Um, however, uh, condition number six asks that the applicant provide the fence um, and wall height um, before final details review. Staff also notes that the residential design guidelines encourage designing without a fence or wall along a street frontage, um, and that should be considered first. And then also respecting the neighborhood context uh, when designing a fence or wall. So while the fence um, does show some open qualities, um, the Planning Commission is really being asked to consider whether um, Fencing off the entire property, especially on a corner lot, is consistent with the neighborhood context uh, and, and, and whether there should be um, modifications to the fence design before final details review. With respect to site coverage, um, the proposal um, does, does meet the requirements. It does not exceed 556 square feet. Uh, there are a number of site uh, coverage elements. Uh, permeable materials have been used um, where feasible. Um, staff also notes um, a number of columns are, are integrated into the design of the fence. Those are identified with the number eight, so you can see the quantity. Staff's also looking for some feedback from the commission um, on whether uh, the number of columns is appropriate or, or excessive. Um, the one thing that the applicant um, did not uh, include in their site coverage calculation is the eave depth. Um, and this is not uh, something that we encounter too often, but the, uh, the zoning code states that eaves greater than 18 inches do count towards total site coverage. So while their proposal complies, um, they did not include the additional eave depth in their site coverage calculations. So condition number seven, uh, requires that they either reduce the eaves down to no more than 18 inches or they'll have to modify their site coverage to account for um, the additional eave depth. Uh, with respect to lighting, there are four light fixtures proposed uh, for this project. Uh, the wall mounted light is a solid uh, brass light with a black finish. Um, it is shielded and direct uh, light downwards. Uh, the path light proposed, again, solid brass with a black finish. Condition of approval number eight just requires the applicant to demonstrate that the path lights are spaced at least 10 feet apart before final details review. Uh, the wall step light also has a black finish. Um, staff is a little concerned about this light um, as it appears to direct um, the light horizontally, uh, whereas we do require that the light be directed downward. Um, and then also the driveway light, um, we're seeing this one more and more. It's an in-ground light. It is shielded, um, but the light is directed out horizontally. And again, because it's in the ground, it's not directing light downward. So condition of approval number nine just requires that all lights be shielded and that um, the light be directed downwards. This may require the applicant to select some alternative fixtures before final details review. So with that, uh, staff is recommending that the commission adopt a resolution accepting the concept design uh, with conditions. And that concludes my presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions. 
Questions for staff from the commissioners? Um, Marnie, did I miss it? Was there a volume study done on this? So we typically will do volume between concept and final. Okay, gotcha, thank you. Um, Marty, um, this, there appear to be um, some, a lot of fairly large windows that don't appear to be divided um, or with mullions, um, and particularly in, that, in the sunroom on the upper level. Is, is that something staff has looked at and has an opinion on? Uh, so I, I did notice that um, the divided light pattern in this house, there are some windows with divided light and, and clearly there are some windows without. Um, the commission it, it can certainly comment on that. And if you'd like to see uh, more division, um, we can have the applicant reevaluate that before final details. Thank you. Are there any other questions for staff from the commissioners? Okay, hearing none. Thank you, Marty. All right. Um, the architect, I believe, is Eric Miller. Eric, are you here to do your presentation? I believe Eric said that they were joining via Zoom. Eric, are you out there? I see him here on my screen. He's, uh, he, uh, maybe he didn't, uh, didn't time it correctly. Michael. There, he, there he goes. Yeah, Eric, sorry about that. No problem. Yeah, thank okay. you. All right, you're on. Okay, so uh, Eric Miller um, and uh, I represent Don Desai. Uh, I'm the uh, architect on the project. And so um, I think uh, Marnie did a great uh, analysis of the site, and I agree with uh, pretty much everything she presented. Um, I personally, like I always do, design what I think is right. And um, it, you know, I, there, there are areas where I'm okay with making adjustments. Uh, so, for instance, the garage door. Uh, you know, we're okay with putting a wooden garage door on. I just like the idea of seeing a Ferrari or a Porsche in there. So, it's just my own uh, idea that it would be nice to see that. So, I'd prefer to leave the glass and steel door, but I'm open to a wooden door uh, for the garage. The other thing is the 18-inch eave. We're okay with pulling those back. I think it will uh, give us uh, uh, we, we, the lock coverage issue will go away, and then also it would hurt us, and in, in, it'll also hurt us in volumetric. So I, I'm going to pull the eaves back to 18 inches. Uh, so we uh, uh, also, I mean, I concur with most of her analysis. I don't see, you know, I'd like to leave the windows the way they are, but I'm open to studying the mullions and muttons on the project. And, you know, we're also, you know, I like to have the fence where it is, but I'm open to, you know, adjusting that. Um, you know, we, we think that because it's a corner lot, uh, it would give our client more privacy to have a little bit more uh, separation from the street. And since the fence is only four feet high, it shouldn't really, I would think it wouldn't really affect uh, uh, the sort of visual, you know, impact of the house. I think the fence sort of gives it a base and I think if you look at that, I don't know if Marnie can put up the, she has a street elevation off of first. Marnie can put that up. I don't know if you can do that, Marnie. So the elevation from the street, uh, looking up the street, looking up first street, I think it really shows, uh, the, can you, but not that one, can you go to the perspective that you had? So it's, I think it's the next one. Uh, yeah, so the upper left corner, uh, I really think it adds to the architecture to have the fence. Uh, I prefer to have the fence. I, I mean, I could do something like instead of having the stone verticals, I could do a, a steel I-beam or something to kind of uh, downplay it so there's not so many vertical lines. But I think the horizontal aspect of it makes it a better project. Uh, but again, I'm willing to, you know, adjust the fence itself also. Uh, and, um, you know, with regard to roof forms, uh, you know, it, it's a hip roof, so it's a traditional roof form, and the house has to spill down to the corner. So we started with a two-story house on first, and we reduced the elevation 
down to a one story where the garage is um, back to Guadalupe because the two story directly across the street starts as a two story and reduces to a one story. So from Guadalupe in the corner of Guadalupe and first, it's gonna be very, uh, I think, consistent with the neighborhood character. And as it goes up more towards Carpenter, that's where we put uh, more volume, but we held the volume down by doing that three and 12 pitch. So I, th I think the, the massing and form of the building is, is I think it's appropriate for the site. And personally, I think it's a beautiful sort of um, uh, 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 architectural style for that corner. So I don't really have much more. I'd love to hear the comments from the planning commission. Okay, thank you, Eric. Uh, are there some questions for uh, the architect regarding his design or any elements of it or with regards to uh, staff's findings? Okay. I guess I have a question for uh, Eric, if he's got a second. Yeah. Basically, um, I, in these renderings here are perfect to illustrate my question. So I don't see a ton of landscaping, you know, between the building and the wall or fencing. And is there more landscaping potentially proposed that's just not shown in these renderings because you're actually trying to show off what the house will look like and not obscure it with a bunch of green? Yeah, so I like to show the house. There will be more right. landscaping, but um, you guys are here to look at the building mostly. And, you know, we're happy to work with staff to add more landscaping, uh, but we would intend, we would think that that's something that we would wind up doing. There's plenty of room between the house and the fence to landscape. That's what I was seeing too, and I just kind of thought it would be an opportunity, and I just didn't know if that was something you were considering. Obviously, this is still a concept. Thanks for your response. That's great. Yeah, thank you. Okay, any other uh, questions for uh, Eric from the commission? Okay, thank you, Eric. If you need additional time to rebut at the end, I'll I'll ask you about that after the discussion from the commissioners or the public comments. Okay, um, open it up to public comments. Um, Carol, you, you've got your uh, screen on, so go ahead. Yes, uh, thank you. Um, we sent in a letter, Carmel Preservation Association sent in a letter about this in which we we showed uh, 30 uh, violations of the design guidelines uh, with this property, with this design, uh, and some of them are redundant, admittedly, but uh, quite a few of them uh, were, were not adhered to. Uh, we had a special meeting of the steering committee of our group uh, just over this project because we felt so strongly about it. Um, and that includes uh, the Carmel Residents Association leadership, the um, Carmel Cares leadership, uh, and the Carmel Preservation Association. Uh, and uh, we have a whole group of, of residents behind us, as you know, the vast majority of residents in Carmel. Uh, and we have in this letter spelled out uh, all the design guidelines that are being violated with this. And, and we would respectfully suggest that uh, Mr. Miller um, start over again. It's not that this is a project that's not lovely somewhere else. We just feel that it is not, it does not fit within the, the uh, village of Carmel by the sea. So thank you very much. Thank you, Carol. Uh, other comments from the public regarding this application? Oh, Neil, go ahead. Thank you. <clears throat> Uh, yes, building on Carol's comments, Carmel Preservation Association, we, we decided to take a close look at the design guidelines and, and uh, compare them with what you're seeing here. For example, residential design guidelines concept page 11 or 15, the primary consideration is the design should be compatible with the design traditions of Carmel. Uh, don't think it looks like that. Residential Design Guidelines Concept, page 19 or 23. The informal image of residential streets in Carmel is the most distinctive feature of its design traditions. The informal image, does this look like an informal design? Residential Design Guidelines Concept, page uh, 35. A new building should appear similar in scale to those traditionally large complex structures and those with continuous plank services and appear massive and should be avoided. Notice the blank surfaces, which is consistent with the modern style architecture. Residential de design guidelines, 
uh, page 36, 7.1, a building's mass should relate to the context of other homes nearby. Larger building masses should be divided into forms that are similar in scale to houses seen in the immediate neighborhood. I think we would find a contrast between this concept and the houses in the immediate neighborhood. Uh, residential design guidelines concept, page 37, um, a building should relate to human scale in its forms, elements, and in the detailing of doors, windows, and walkways. Again, we're not seeing that. Oversized windows and windows that are not broken up, that are large panes of glass. We're seeing, again, the sort of geometric, modern design, large chunks of square space, uninterrupted with perfect windows with no panes, et cetera. None of the detail that indicates human scale. Uh, residential to guidelines, page 38. Number five, to maintain the range of traditional building forms. Does this look like we're maintaining the range of traditional building forms? Number six, uh, page 39, 43 of the design guideline. In general, moderately pitched roofs, 412 to 612 are preferred. Shallow to moderately pitched roofs are appropriate on one-story buildings. Um, I don't want to run out of time, but uh, residential to guide, design line, guidelines uh, for final details, execution of design details substantially affect the perceived character of the project, including its mass and scale and its design diversity and compatibility within the neighborhood context. Again, does this look like a Carmel um, uh, house that is designed for a village forest character? I would suggest not. Residential design guidelines, page four, 9.3. Um, quotes, avoid grand entryways, windows and doors that are out of proportion with human form and the ostentatious design treatments. Nine, the use of grand doorway and picture windows on street facing elements is discouraged. 10, uh, page eight or 12 of the design guidelines, the use of a grand entry, et cetera, et cetera. Provide windows on walls facing the street to help convey building uh, human scale. Uh, I think when, when you look at all these elements of the design guidelines and then you look at this project, you can see that comprehensively there is not a match between the design guidelines of Carmel and this concept. Thank you very much. Thank you, Neil. Okay, is there anyone else from the public who would like to make a comment? I believe we have a few folks here in the chambers, Mr. Chair. Okay, just come up to the podium and you have three minutes each. Hello, this is David O'Neill. Um, I'm a resident and I'm also investing in other properties here to renovate them and stuff like that. So I'm going to be working with you and that'll be great. Um, I really respect the design of this property. I think it's really great that we're, we're doing something new with it. And I, because there's not a, a client that's going to be living in it, it's sort of, you know, built for somebody possibly in the future. I think we have the, uh, the opportunity to build something that's really in line with Carmel's style and character and following the design guidelines because those design guidelines were created by the people in the community and we need to pay attention to them and i think you know as a person that's new here and recently investing those are the reasons why i'm here you know those traditional design guidelines were really important so thank you thank you anyone else Hi, my name is John Shoemaker, and uh, I'm uh, born and raised here in Carmel. Uh, I'm a fourth generation Carmelite. Uh, my parents, family, and uh, uh, extended family have been members of the fire department, police department, built our community, and, uh, and uh, the reason we love it so much is because it is quaint and it is um, different than most other communities. Uh, I would encourage everyone to look at those guidelines. Um, I, I really do respect uh, Mr. Miller's uh, design. Uh, I think it's uh, beautiful. I just don't think it fits in that neighborhood. I know that uh, Mr. LePage, I believe, lives up in that neighborhood and, and uh, it can look out and see what these little board and bat structures uh, are all about. Uh, I do think that the uh, house on the uh, southwest corner of Guadalupe and First is indicative of something I'd like to see there. 
uh, is just absolutely gorgeous. I like the, um, uh, uh, the, the fence, the, uh, just, just the, everything about it. It just, in, in, including uh, the landscape, uh, it's just gorgeous. Um, and uh, the Carmel uh, Preservation Association, I think uh, I would agree with all of what they were saying. Uh, you know, I know that Mr. Miller uh, is a wonderful uh, architect uh, and, uh, you know, craftsman style homes uh, I've seen from him are just gorgeous. I think those are indicative of something that we can see here. Um, and uh, it, it, the ver variety of design for all these homes that we are going to eventually have, that we're going to endure the building of as uh, my, my father's property is on the northeast corner of First and Guadalupe, which is directly across the street uh, and uh, would impact us greatly. Um, so uh, I would encourage um, you to think hard about, uh, I, I think this design is wonderful for maybe something down on the dunes in Carmel uh, along the beach or something like that, but it just doesn't fit uh, our uh, our small um, uh, neighborhood. Um, so um, that that's what I have to say uh, about that. And then the eave depth of, of, of that, I think I think it's a great depth. I think it looks great. So why would you make that smaller? It 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 it, dis, it, it makes the design less of a a, a, a centerpiece. Uh, you know, I think that. I think lessening the the size and keeping those eave depths with respect to what he's designed, I think that's a beautiful design. I think it would be, take away from that um, if that were to be something that you guys would consider. Uh, but I would consider uh, encourage you to consider other options um, uh, other than this the this design and I appreciate all your time I certainly appreciate Mr. Miller and his time uh, and effort put into this uh, but being across the street from from that uh, thank you John. Your next time's two years, up. Thank I, you. I really appreciate it thank you all very much all right thank you okay are there any other members of the public that would like to comment on this application we have someone making their way up right now okay um, hi, my name is Lynn Isbicki, and I live at the northwest corner of First and Guadalupe. And I just wanted to add my voice. I really don't have much more to add, but I agree with everything that's been said. This house is just not right for that neighborhood. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else in the chamber there that wants to come up? I see someone coming up. Come on up. Hi, my name is uh, Amber Dowson, and I live on uh, Guadalupe Second Northwest, right next door to Lynn. Um, we are a small, truly a almost all fully residential, live there all the time neighborhood. I call it sort of the blue collar neighborhood of Carmel and a glass garage door with a Ferrari is a dream for some, would be a nightmare for the rest of us. Um, I, I don't believe, Mr. Miller, you do absolute beautiful work. I've seen it all over, all over the city, however it is inappropriate scale to that neighborhood. Uh, even the two-story homes um, have uh, gardens, they have a lot of greenery, they have grapevine fencing, uh, nothing is solid and, and, and blocked in like you can't touch it. We all talk to each other, we all have open fencing, we all uh, talk to each other uh, walking on the streets with our dogs and th this project. I have been to Mr. Miller's uh, meetings and we have all objected to not the redoing of that corner, but the scale of the projects that would go up. And if this one home is approved, we will have 15 more just like it on that block. And there's no other block in the city of Carmel that has a block of two-story homes, nowhere. And it's just not a match for our neighborhood, which shows why there are so many neighbors here to object to this particular project. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? And we have someone else making their way up. 
Sure. Hi, my name is Ruth Doyle Buzzard, and I also live on Guadalupe. I'm actually in the county, but um, recently with all of our rains that we've had pouring down, um, there is no infrastructure to manage all of that water that's coming down from Carmel, or from Carpenter. It comes down first, which is part of the city, and then just rolls down the street. If you have the opportunity and we have a rain, it would be a good idea to go and look at that as to what's happening in that area. It's literally a river. And how are they going to be mitigating that rainfall from that area? It's just astounding. Most of us have to have sump pumps, major sump pumps, to pump the water that's coming down from Carpenter into um, Guadalupe. And most of these people will tell you that live on Guadalupe, they have that issue. So where does that state anything in that plan about how they're going to mitigate all that water? As far as the, the building of it, I think it's not in character with the rest of the properties that are on Guadalupe and the size of it is just going to be ridiculous. There is one property that was completed about three years ago on the corner of First and Guadalupe, which is in character, but these do not match what is on that street. But I think the major thing is you really need to look at the infrastructure, the trees, that have come down recently, and the water issues are tantamount to this whole project. And that hasn't been addressed, and it needs to be taken care of. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other speakers? Everyone seems to be stationary at the moment, so I think we're okay to move on, Mr. Chair. Okay, uh, I'll close the public comments. Uh, I want to uh, ask uh, Mr. Miller if he wants to use any additional time for a rebuttal or <clears throat> comments. Yes, I would. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. So the house itself, uh, I don't consider it a modern house. I think it more of is a contemporary craftsman house. Uh, it's consistent with a lot of the materials we use in craftsman houses, like mahogany and wood or mahogany and stone. And so, you know, for me, it's not a modern house is more, you know, uh, contemporary or more, um, you know, steel and glass. This is more wood and stone. So um, I think it's a house that does fit in the guidelines for, of the city. Uh, and so I also uh, think the volume and the mass of the house is really carefully thought out. And I think it's obvious when you get out to the site and you stand on First Street and see the netting. The netting really indicates how that house is gonna fit on that corner. And it, it's the same strategy that the house that's on Guadalupe and First took. They took a two story and they broke it down to a one story on the street on Guadalupe. We're doing the same thing. We're taking a two story towards Carpenter and we're breaking it down so that it's a one story down in Guadalupe. So from Guadalupe or the corner of Guadalupe and first, it's gonna feel uh, like a one story uh, element. Also, if you go down, I have pictures of all these if you, if you wanna see them. If you go down uh, Guadalupe, there's 17 two-story houses. And if you go down uh, 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 Carpenter, there's 14 in that immediate area. So I think it's consistent with, uh, you know, the, city, uh, the city's guidelines. And, you know, I, I, I would disagree with most of the comments. Uh, tonight on that, so. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, I'm gonna close the public comments discussion, opened up to the commission for their discussion. Um, Commissioner Dells, would you like to begin? Um, no, I would like a little more time. Thank okay, you. not a problem. Uh, Commissioner Bolton, would you like to begin? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm in general agreement with most of the neighbors that this doesn't meet the neighborhood character test. And it's not so much one thing alone, it's the overall impression I get from the design, and especially the renderings. Um, it seems massive. Um, it seems 
I don't have a problem with the craftsman modern style as a describer, Eric. Uh, I think materials are appropriate. I like all this, but it just, the overall impression, especially with this closed in fencing, uh, makes this look kind of like a compound. And I don't, I don't like that. I don't think uh, we want to encourage uh, enclosed private compound looking structures and, and properties in Carmel. Um, I think on First Street, it seems like it, uh, I understand the attempt to lower it and make it step down towards Gordon Lupre. I think that's partially successful, but it still seems fairly massive on the uh, on the First Street side. At least that's my impression for me on site today. Um, so I, I don't really see the point in getting too into the weeds on the details on this because I, I think it needs some work. And I think we need to have something a little bit more in keeping with um, the style and the general, the general uh, feeling of this particular neighborhood. This house would be more appropriate and it's more similar to Eric's earlier properties down uh, by the water. And I think it's a nice design, but I, I don't really feel it fits here. I think that's it for now. I might have more at the end. Okay, thanks, Commissioner Bolton. Um, Commissioner Locke, your comments? Do you have some comments at this time? Sure, thank you. Um, first of all, I appreciate uh, Commissioner Bolton's comments just now. I think he covered uh, kind of some of the things that I want to talk about. And Eric, I do want to say that I do love your modern, and if you're going to call it a contemporary design, I think your projects are beautiful. And yes, I think this would be absolutely lovely down toward the water. Um, I really don't think it's appropriate in this neighborhood. And again, before I even go into that, I just also want to say I did attend the workshops that you had on the whole project. And I understand now that it's been bifurcated, um, that we're only looking at these two houses. But I also think that, um, that the future project of the hotel renovation or the motel renovation is something that needs to be considered as a whole because they are integrated. And so my comments today are just about this, these two houses. But going forward, I think we need to perhaps look at the whole thing um, and how it all interacts. Um, so I think the design is, um, it would dominate the street. And um, so I think Commissioner Bolton kind of touched on some of these things. Um, in my opinion, there are too many doors, too many windows. Um, the storefront windows, as you've called them out, are literally and also glass walls. Um, you've got floor to ceiling heights. Um, you have, uh, let's see, we've got at least seven windows that are over six feet high, two on the main floor, three on the mid floor, two on the upper floor. The um, sunroom in the master bathroom is a glass box where you literally have three sides of glass, flat roof, um, and it is on a deck where um, anybody can see in to that room. Um, so it's, to me, it's out of context with that neighborhood. Um, the dining room doors, and I, I mean, there's just some really huge doors, nine by 12 door in the dining room. Um, I just, I think it's, it's too grand. It's out of scale, it's out of context. Um, you know, and when uh, we had comments about the residential design guidelines, I've also been listening to those meetings and hearing what people are saying. Um, and I think that um, it was mentioned with the landscaping earlier today. And that, that is one of the really important things that I think we have to look at going forward also is how we screen some of the houses so you don't have to look at all of the things that are going on. Uh, but beyond the residential guidelines, we actually have our um, city code which has the design regulations. And those regulations talk about mass and bulk and they do talk about scale. And I just don't see these windows, doors um, being in that, in, in something that I think would be appropriate for that neighborhood. Um, so yeah, I would like to see it go back. Um, the fence also, I kind of have an issue with that. I think that, again, it's beautiful for the design, um, but I don't like the horizontal siding on the fence. I think it, it makes the property, as it was mentioned, makes it look like a compound. It's not friendly. 
Um, and um, yeah, I just, I, I just think this needs to, to have some redesign. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Locke. Uh, Commissioner Allen, you would like to make some comments? Um, yeah, I believe that both Commissioner Locke and um, Commissioner Bolton have covered pretty much everything that I was thinking, so I don't have anything else to add. Okay, um, I want to double back on uh, Commissioner Delves. Uh, yeah, that's why I wanted to wait. Thank you to my colleagues. Um, and I'm, I'm inclined to agree that um, I think it's a really, it's a very pretty house. I, I like it, I like it somewhere else. Um, and there might even be places in Carmel where, uh, where it works, but not on this street and not on that corner. Um, and I, I share the concern about, you know, we got a whole block here that's gonna get developed. And um, I've actually asked, asked staff if we have the tool available to us to you know, insist on some sort of master plan um, so that we know what's coming. And um, uh, Brandon had said really no, that you know, these are all zoned residential lots in the R1 district and that essentially each one stands alone. Um, but it's still concerning, um, and especially if you're in that neighborhood about wanting to know what's coming. Um, and, you know, Eric, I, I, you, your initial statement here as to what is coming, um, it's a big statement. Um, and I, I, I think it's going to, when, when you come out of the gates with something this big, this bold, this different, um, as compared to the neighborhood, um, I, you're going to get resistance from the neighborhood. Um, I, I wanted to um, applaud the Carmel Preservation Association for um, the, the work you did and sent over. Um, if you sort of welcome to our world of having to figure out how to interpret design guidelines and welcome to the world of architects like Eric Miller who also use these design guidelines to inform themselves. Um, and I, I, I think what you'll see is that, um, you know, while your point of that uh, this house violates 30. That's just the number, um, and I don't know how many there actually are, but it's probably three or four hundred individual things in here. And a lot of a lot of our design guidelines are even contrary. Um, and it's it, it, it's easy to cherry pick a few to support something um, or to not support something. And we have to look at the whole thing in balance. And I just always remind us that a big piece of these design guidelines encourages variety, encourages diversity. Um, you know, it says, yes, we, know we want to stick to the traditional, but we also want uh, to encourage innovation and diversity, that which, which makes this job hard sometimes. Um, but I, I, with that as, a, as background, I, 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 it's too much. Um, I, 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 find the, I find it a little top heavy um, and that's a word that I find in the design guidelines. Um, and um, I think that has a lot to do with a lot of the things that uh, Commissioner Locke pointed out, just big windows, big doors, big eaves, a lot of windows, um, and not a lot of separation um, in the windows. I, I think you're right, Eric, that that fence provides a base. Um, but again, on that corner lot, um, the whole thing is just kind of scream and look at me. Um, and you know, I, I, there's no other house in that neighborhood that says, look at me. They all kind of blend together you know, organically, really. And um, I think you got to find a way to re respect that element of the neighborhood. That's all. Thank you, Commissioner Dells. Um, sorry, sorry, but it's not visible there. I missed that. That's all right. Um, yeah, I, I think, uh, well, first of all, it's it's a really, uh, it, it's, I think Eric has looked at the guidelines and he's set up parameter problems and he's dealt with a lot in, in regards to how, what the guidelines encourage. It, it cascades down the property. Um, I think it's a little unfair to judge it from the renderings. It, 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 you know, it's just sitting there all by itself. So it looks a little more massive. But I, the, the big problem, the big challenge, I don't want to say problem, the challenge with this is you've got this neighborhood 
It's a very informal neighborhood of really modest Carmel type homes, traditional homes. And um, now we have a lot, which is gonna be completely redeveloped. And uh, we're introducing something which doesn't really fit into the context of the neighborhood. I understand Eric's point about it being a, a sort of a contemporary or modern craftsman style. The materials are wood, they're stone, they're glass. These are these are craftsman style materials, but but it, it is a, a house that presents itself in a very formal sort of way. It's got a it's a very sort of um, uh, geometric uh, uh, design with a large glass, large uh, clean expanses of material, very low pitch pitch roof and uh and as everybody's acknowledged it's it's a really nice design and eric's a very talented architect and, and also an architect who's capable of designing a lot of different styles and uh we're going to see that in the, in the next uh, design study we're looking at but the challenge here is that how do you get it to fit into the context of this this neighborhood and so i think that's where it, where it fails and and um you know, without going into a lot of details about the design, I think that's that's where, that's what I hear consistently from the commissioners and from the public's comments that it just doesn't fit into the context of this neighborhood. So, um, having said that, uh, I think the uh, the overall draft condition here is that we need to see a. a a design that 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 fits into the context of the neighborhood more and that could be done with this design you could make it simpler um i think uh you know having it more open to the street more casual more informal maybe you could take that that those those uh, concepts and work it into this design make it work better i don't know i don't want to redesign this thing that's not what we're trying to do here that's that's what you you do. That's what your talent and training allows you to do. So, but what I what I hear from everybody is that it just doesn't fit into the context of this particular neighborhood. And so the challenge for you is how do you do that? You could take this design, rework it, make it make it do that. But but I think that's that's what uh, that's the overall direction here that's being given from the public and the commissioners. And if and if any, I invite any commissioner to uh, expound on that at this time if i'm not stating that correctly if they want to any of the other commissioners want to give some more direction uh and this is what you know we're in concept right here this is when we give you direction to try to get this this worked out so so it works in so i want to give it uh, a moment here for any commissioner to just speak up and add to this whatever they think Anybody want to jump in there? No, well, I, Michael, I think you said it well. Yeah, I don't have anything yeah, to add great. either. Okay, with, with having said that, uh, we've got this resolution here with draft conditions as per staff. Uh, I don't really see any of them that contradict the, you know, what I'm, what, what we're saying. It's just that I think that what needs to be added is that we need a redesign here that somehow brings it more in context with this this informal kind of traditional neighborhood. You know, you can take, you know, contemporary designs can be eclectic, more eclectic, where they they borrow elements of, of traditional neighborhoods and, and make it work. So uh, I would just, I mean, I'll, I'll make a resolution that we uh, add the draft condition that the design needs to be redesigned to fit more into the informal traditional context of the neighborhood. I'll second that. Okay, do we have any more discussion? Okay, Commissioner Roll Call, please. Commissioner Allen? Yes. Commissioner Bolton? Yes. Commissioner Delves? Yes. Commissioner Locke? Yes. Chair LePage? Yes. Okay, the motion is passed to uh, give the applicant uh, more direction in the draft conditions that it be redesigned to uh, fit in with the context of the neighborhood. Thank you. 
Okay, we have one more design study this evening. This is item number eight. This is DS22-151. Uh, it's the uh, CRI um, on Carpenter Incorporated, lot four, consideration of concept design study for the construction of a 1,995 square foot two-story residence, inclusive of basement and detached garage located on Guadalupe to South East of First Avenue. I have staff report, please. Well, thank you, Chair LePage. Uh, so lot four uh, is located just to the south of lot two. Uh, I'm not gonna go through the, the background again um, of the property, so I'm just gonna skip, kind of skip over some of these. Um, So the applicant is proposing to construct a two-story residence. Um, staff is again recommending acceptance of the concept with conditions. So this is another traditional 4,000 square foot lot. There are no structures currently on this lot. It is primarily asphalt and landscaping. Uh, the proposal is for a, a 1995 square foot two-story residence. It includes a basement. Um, and a detached garage in the front setback. Uh, with respect to forest character, uh, the lot currently has two private trees and two stumps. Uh, one tree has been approved for removal and one acacia uh, has been identified for preservation. Um, there's also a public stump in the right of way. And condition of approval number two, again, requires three new upper canopy trees um, and this is to meet the recommended tree density that's set forth uh, in the zoning code. Same condition, the forester can approve payment of in lieu fees um, if she determines that that is appropriate. With respect to parking and access, um, this um, project would have a detached garage in the front setback. Um, the um, the zoning code encourages variety and diversity in neighborhood designs um, and gives the planning commission uh, the authority to approve uh, detached garages in the front setback um, if they meet certain criteria. Uh, so those standards or criteria include that the garage is no more than 12 feet wide. Uh, this proposed garage is uh, 10 feet wide. Uh, the maximum size is 250 square feet. Uh, this garage is proposed at 210 square feet. The maximum height is 15 feet. Um, and the proposed garage would be 13 feet 10 inches um, as measured from existing grade. Uh, the applicant is proposing to raise the grade. Um, so the, the height to final grade would actually be a, a little bit lower. So the code requires that at least 50% of the right of way uh, remain landscaped or preserved in a natural forested condition. Um, the proposed detached garage would be located where there's an existing asphalt driveway. Uh, so there would be no additional uh, loss of open space. Condition of approval number three requires the applicant to submit a right of way landscape plan um, for final details review. We did get a preliminary landscape plan uh, for the private landscaping, um, but we would also like to see a landscape plan for the public right of way. Um, the next standard is that the proposed setback would not uh, impact significant or moder moderately significant trees. Again, this is an existing um, paved driveway. Um, staff does not anticipate that this would um, would impact any trees. The nearest tree is a public tree uh, located um, in the right of way. And condition of approval number four requires the applicant to do some root exploration and have the roots um, evaluated by the city forester prior to final details review, just to make sure that the construction of the garage and reconstruction of the driveway uh, will work in this location, um, being within that proximity to tree number six feet. The next standard is that the free and safe movement of pedestrians and vehicles will be protected. So the proposed setback of the garage is two feet, three inches. 
from the front property line. There's approximately 16 feet, nine inches from the property line to the edge of the right of way. So this provides approximately 19 feet of backup distance. Um, the garage is 20 feet deep. Uh, so staff finds that there is sufficient uh, space for a vehicle to back out safely um, and, and that the proposal does uh, meet the standard. The next standard um, is that all development on the site will be in scale with adjacent properties and the neighborhood context, um, as well as being consistent with the adopted design guidelines. Um, staff does have some concern about um, raising the grade, uh, making the garage more prominent than if it was constructed at grade. So we are recommending condition of approval number five, uh, which requires the applicant to evaluate um, constructing uh, this detached garage at grade rather than uh, raising the grade. Um, so also um, the placement of the garage in the setback uh, will add diversity to the streetscape. So most of the garages in the immediate vicinity are attached and outside of the front setback. Um, the staff does find that this would add diversity uh, and the project would meet the standard. With respect to mass and bulk, um, the, the house is proposed to be set back a little over 35 feet from the front property line. Um, and you'll notice in this rendering, the front yard fence um, is also proposed to be set back. Um, and the distance is, is 15 feet from the front property line. The second floor has been placed at the rear of the lot um, and the side setbacks are three feet on the north uh, and seven feet on the south. Uh, the applicant is proposing a west facing patio that is covered um, at the second floor. Some outdoor amenities proposed include a fire pit um, and then just to the north of the, the covered area is an uncovered area with a proposed barbecue and some built in dining. Uh, staff does feel that the the covered um, covering the deck area does really add to um, the mass and bulk um, that this house presents to the front of the property, um, but also recognizes the significant setback from the street, um, and it's possible that landscaping could really you know soften um, that view. Also with respect to mass and bulk, uh, the zoning code in, has uh, maximum uh, plate and ridge heights uh, for, uh, for structures. Um, based on staff's measurement, it appears that the plate height along the north elevation um, is at 19 feet, uh, whereas a maximum of 18 feet is allowed. Uh, and then on the south elevation, um, it appears to be about 18 feet, six inches. Um, up to about 18 feet, seven inches. So condition of approval number six requires the plate heights to be reduced uh, prior to final details review. Uh, with respect to building and roof form, um, again, staff notes that the, the floor plan is uh, irregular. Uh, it doesn't have uh, quite as much variation in the wall plane um, as the, the home we looked at previously. Uh, the roof form is more uh, simple with an intersecting gable and a traditional pitch of four and 12 um, and 18 inch feet each. The finished details proposed for this home is painted horizontal siding with a brick veneer wainscot. Uh, the roof material is proposed to be a slate tile. Uh, doors and windows would be wood uh, and the garage door would also be wood with divided light um, glass panels at the top. The fencing proposed for this project, um, again, is a horizontal wood fence. Uh, this um, ties into the horizontal uh, siding on the house. And uh, the fence is broken up with brick columns, which ties into the brick wainscot um, of the home. Again, the fence is set back 15 feet from the front property line which provides uh, quite a bit of opportunity uh, for landscaping that would be visible from the public way. Um, again, I mentioned we did receive a preliminary landscape plan. The city forester did not have an opportunity to review and comment on that plan. 
Uh, but prior to final details review, uh, we will come back with um, a fully developed landscape plan uh, for your consideration. Uh, at the rear of the property, the applicant is proposing a concrete wall with a stucco finish. With respect to exterior lighting, uh, two lights have been proposed. Both have a raw copper finish. Uh, both are shielded and direct light downwards um, and comply with our uh, maximum uh, light emit emittance standards. The staff is recommending that the commission adopt a resolution accepting the concept design with conditions. And that concludes my presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, questions for staff from the commissioners? No. No questions? Okay, thank you, Marnie. All right, uh, Eric, you are up for your presentation. I'm back. You're back. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, so um, I, I concur with staff report. Uh, we um, will absolutely bring the plate down. Uh, we caught that too, and it was just a drafting error on our part. So uh, we also, uh, the garage itself, uh, actually we aren't building the grade up. The center of the garage is at 62 and the street right up to the edge of our property line is like 61. So we took the average grade there and uh, have a six inch slope up to it, but I'm okay with dropping it down. It makes no difference to me if we wanna drop it down to 61. Uh, that just means I'll have to have a step into the garage from the backside of the house. So we can do that. Uh, I didn't really uh, disagree with anything staff said. So, you know, any questions from the planning commission? Uh, questions for Eric and the commissioners? I have a question. Um, Eric, what is the square footage of the deck that's on the second floor? Oh, so let me see. I got somewhere around 350 square feet or something. Sounds about right. That's 18. 18 by, did you have a score footage on there? We're looking for it. Side drawing information. Yeah, we're gonna have to go to a drawing and measure it. So, Lou and I will we'll find out how big that is. So Thank you. Gonna go to the full size drawing, but it's about that, Stephanie. I think you're pretty close. Yeah, okay. thank you. Okay, any other questions for Eric from the commission? Okay, thank you, Eric. Thank you. Uh, uh pray. Um, this time, uh, members of the public. Can make comments regarding this application. Looks like we have some folks coming up from the audience here in the chambers. Mr. Okay. Hi, Ann Britt Outson again. I was just curious about the basement. What does that really entail? Now, is it is it under the house? Is it what what does that mean? Does it have access? Somewhere, I mean, there's a lot of water, as someone had already mentioned on that, in that area. So I'm just wondering how much studies have been done to um, to have a better understanding of that property and the water runoff, and then have a basement. So, Marnie, can you give uh, the uh, uh, just a definition of basement? Also, I just wanted to uh, remind the public this is concept. Uh, all all, app, all building uh, permits in Carmel are required to have a, a, a drainage plan, and that doesn't come under this part of the review. It happens here in the uh, building permit process. So, yeah. So this is the uh, basement floor plan. Um, so it is below grade. Uh, the applicant has identified it as mechanical, laundry, storage, um, and potentially a wine cellar, and it's accessed internally through the house. 
Okay. Um, thank you, Marnie, for that explanation of basement. All right. Do we have any other members of the public in the council chambers that would like to make comments regarding this application? If so, please come up to the podium. Yeah, I think we have uh, another one, Mr. Chair. Hi, thanks a lot. John Shoemaker again. Uh, more of this, please. Uh, and, and the reason I came up to say that is because I, I feel that we really kind of, you know, uh, gave, gave uh, a really bash, bashing on the other one. And uh, th this, is, this, this is great. So thank you all very much for your time and effort. Mr. Miller, thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Okay, is there anyone else in the council chambers who wanted to uh, make some comments, sir? And then I'm, I'll get to the uh, people that are in the- uh, Yeah, I think we're, it looks like we're done here, Mr. Chair. Okay, Neil, you had your hand up. Go ahead. You got the floor. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, much better, <clears throat> much better. Um, I, I have a question about the overall design of all of these houses, if they are all slated to be two story. Uh, are we, so we're gonna do them one at a time. So does that mean that the first day are gonna be two story? And then when the last two come, we're gonna say, hey, wait a second, you can't do all two story. Uh, I, I'm just looking at the context of all of these houses. If there isn't some way to look at the whole thing I understand that's already been raised, but I, I wanted to underline that too. I'm a little concerned. Thank you very much. Thank you, Neil. Uh, anyone else here with their hand up? Want to make any comments? I don't see any hands going up. Okay. Uh, once again, Eric, uh, I'll give you a chance for any rebuttal. There wasn't wasn't a lot of comments there, but. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, uh, well, uh, I, I uh, as you said, water and all those kind of you know issues relative to a runoff and you know storage are all going to be included in our uh, civil engineering drawings and construction documents. Um, there's not a lot to say about this. Um, I'm glad people like it, um, you know, and uh, I appreciate the fact that uh, uh, you know uh, people are feeling comfortable with the location of the house on the site with regard to two stories we're going to we'll, we'll address that as we go down the street so um, yes that is going to be something that we'll have to deal with on each individual house but you know, it's not just about two stories it's about where the mass is how far back from the street it is it's about how uh how the garage fits on the side you know which side the entry's on i mean that's the advantage that we have as we design these houses. We can we can adjust the volume of each house based on the neighboring house. So, and I would argue that the first two houses that we're looking at are, are exactly right. So if, even if you don't like the style on the first house, it's still perfectly placed on that site because the mass is pushed back towards um, Carpenter and the lower elements are pushed down to uh, Guadalupe and if you look at the straight elevation on Guadalupe it looks big but that's because you're looking at a straight elevation if you look at that house it's a low garage on Guadalupe and it's almost exactly like the house across the street that everyone likes a two-story that goes down to a one-story so I think the basic massing of these two houses together is really quite appropriate and I hope everyone I would encourage everyone to drive by look at the staking and flagging tomorrow because that shows more than the raw elevations that we showed you today you can really see how it fits. So I think the advantage is that you can work with the forms, you can work with the volume, you can work with the garage, you can work with all the elements in the house uh, as you as you look at the, but each one will be reviewed by this uh, planning commission. So, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll be in front of this, you know, commission every time, so. Okay, thank you, Eric. All right, I'm gonna close the public comments, open it up to the Commission for their comments. Um, Commissioner Bolton, you want to kick it off or kick it away? I'm afraid my uh, earbuds died, so hopefully you can still hear me okay because now we're just on the computer speaker. We can hear you. Okay, cool. So right. I basically agree with the staff board on this one. I think they did an excellent job. Mm -hmm. I don't have any particular objections to this design or anything. I think the height should come down, but apparently that was an oversight, so that's great. 
Um, I don't really have a strong uh, opinion about the garage, but like I say, I think the staff report stands perfectly and I can accept any resolution that basically accepts its findings. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Bolton. Uh, Commissioner Delves? Yeah, I, I think I just agree. Um, I think staff has done a good job on this one, as always. I think pretty much have it exactly right for this uh, uh, for this stage of approval. Um, I think this house fits um, in the neighborhood. I think it's a it, it's a it is a statement to the neighborhood of you know what a house built in 2022, well 2023, probably 24, I guess. Um, you know, can look like um, you know a, a more a, a new house in that neighborhood, and here's what it looks like. So I I applaud it, um, and I do like the uh, covered deck um, um, on the upper level. I, I think that's a it's a feature. I think it's you know it's unique um, to, to a lot of uh, other things, and it may be a sort of a new feature in that neighborhood that still fits there. So uh, well done, thanks. Thank you, Commissioner Delves. Uh, Commissioner Allen, your comments? Uh, yeah, nothing more to add. I think this is well done. And Commissioner Lott. I like this too. Um, and um, the only comment I would just perhaps to consider is there are some large windows um, on the upper floor that um, could potentially cause glare. Um, it might be worth looking into dividing those in some way so that they're just not a big sheet of glass and then there aren't very many of them but no I, I really like this I think it fits much in much better in the context of the neighborhood so thank you Eric Miller okay we have uh, a resolution from staff to approve the uh, the design concept with uh, the conditions that Marnie went over and um, I didn't hear anything from the commission adding any additional uh, direction other than maybe exploring uh, dividing up some of the large the larger piece the larger uh, windows so um, would uh, one of the commissioners like to make a motion or shall I I'm happy to make a motion to um, All right, go ahead, Commissioner Dels. to approve the uh, resolution as provided by staff. Um, period. I'll second that. Okay. Is there any more discussion? Hearing none, roll call, please. Commissioner Allen? Yes. Commissioner Bolton? Yes. Commissioner Delves? Yes. Commissioner Locke? Yes. Chair LePage? Yes, motion is carried. Thank you. Okay, that uh, concludes the public hearings on our agenda. Next item on our agenda is the director's report. Thank you, Mr. You Chair. Yeah, thank you. Uh, first update for everyone, uh, as Mr. McWalters pointed out at the beginning of the meeting, staff has been working on a wireless ordinance. I'm happy to report that I do have uh, a red line draft that I've been uh, basically done with, with working with our council. Uh, my hope is to uh, come to you in February with that, uh, have a, a public meeting, a workshop. I, I would suggest, and Mr. Chair, you and I can work on this together, I would suggest we do that as a special meeting in mid to late February as its own item, not on the regular scheduled planning commission. Uh, this wouldn't be as a recommendation of the ordinance, this really would just be a workshop on the ordinance. So that's, that's targeting mid to late February. Uh, very excited to bring that forward. Um, also, what's been going on, our housing ad hoc committee has been meeting regularly. That's comprised of council members Richards <coughs> and Ferlito. Um, we've been uh, discussing you know, what that housing element update's gonna look like. Uh, we will be at the city council on February 7th to roll out the feasibility analysis that was done and talk about some of the next steps. And then our next community meeting of the housing ad hoc committee will be February 28th here in the chambers in person. Uh, so we're very excited for that. I'm um, also happy to announce that we've now scanned 2,200 of our properties uh, files into the system. So 2,200 of the properties in this village can now see their property files online. That's about 70 plus or minus percent of those. Uh, we're on target to have that project completely done by the end of February or early March, uh, which has really gone a long way to make 
interacting with your files and planning world a, a lot easier. And another thing we've done uh, on that vein is uh, we're gonna have online payments available to be taken here in about two to three weeks. It's something the city's never been able to do before. Uh, so we're very excited so that when you, you know, process your building permit or your planning permit, uh, the way it works right now is you still have to either come in or call us with a credit card, even if you're submitting online. Uh, so now we're gonna have that option for people to submit their payment online just like a, like a modern city would do. Uh, so we're very excited about that. Um, I'm also excited next week, believe it or not, is my second year anniversary with the city. So I um, can't believe it. it's been two years already. <laughs> Feels like 40, so thank you very much. Um, no, it's been wonderful working with all of you. So thank you for a great two years. Um, Leah also, I want to announce, is back full time with the city. I announced I sadly that she was leaving us a couple months ago and she just couldn't stay away because <laughs> it's Didn't such a fun place to work. <laughs> So Leah's full time now and never ever going to leave, right? I got that in writing, in blood. It's a guarantee. Um, and then the last thing, this is on a serious note though, um, I, I've been getting updates as we've been going along. The Salinas River is at serious flood stages. Um, there's a really good chance that by noon tomorrow it's actually going to sever the peninsula. Um, we're going to be an island potentially. That hasn't happened since 1995 uh, because we do have access cutoff going south through Big Sur. Uh, all of the highways heading off of the peninsula may be cut off for up to two to three days uh, starting tomorrow at noon. So plan accordingly. You know, if you live off the peninsula, think about that. If you live on the peninsula, think about what that means for you. But we encourage everybody to be safe um, and take care. So yeah, it's, it's serious out there. It's happened before. Yep, and so actually, um, I just saw Chip walk in. He and I and the mayor and Council Member Barron are gonna do a quick emergency uh, vlog and let everybody know that signs up for the Friday letter. So that's what I have. The storm's not over yet. So continue to be safe out there, please. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Brandon. Um, yeah, I was trying to go somewhere Friday. I might have to change my plans. <laughs> yeah. You can go anywhere you want on the peninsula. <laughs> yeah, good. there you go. Anywhere you want, as long as you don't leave town. That's right. <laughs> Okay, everyone, uh, that concludes our agenda tonight. I want to thank all the commissioners for their thoughtful and uh, concise comments. Got us out of here uh, four minutes after seven. Not too bad. Yeah, well done. Thank, thank you. you. You are adjourned. Thank you. you next thank night. you. Good night. Thank you so much. I know. Well, let's Look see how it went to the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks for coming.